Thanks again, everybody, for listening to Diffuse Congruence. This is Zucky, and I'm here with Pervez. Hey, welcome, listeners. Good to be with you again, Zucky. Yeah, so we've started a new endeavor here uh, to enhance the experience that people have listening to Diffuse Congruence. And why don't you give our audience the heads up on that? Yeah, we're really excited about this. We have just launched our Patreon page. So you have a new destination or URL that you can find the latest and greatest about Diffuse Congruence. And in addition to that, you have now the opportunity to participate by not only listening and commenting and being a part of a community of people that do check out the show, but also you get the opportunity to now support the show financially. If you go to patreon.com slash diffuse congruence, you can find out more about how you can be a part of that endeavor. What we really want is an opportunity to increase not just uh, the quantity of output that we are putting out, but also the quality of output that we're putting out. So we're hoping that you out there in the world will be able to help us out by uh, allowing us to upgrade our equipment and as necessary, upgrade our production capability and really make this show the best it can be for all of you out there. You know, I know, Zucky, when you and I started out and, you know, when when we put our brains together to kind of come up with the idea of the podcast and what we wanted it to be, you and I, you know, realized that if we were going to be preserving and capturing the stories uh, of the likes of Dr. Omar Farouk Abdullah or Osama Kanin or Imam Zaid Shakir or, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. But if we're if we're capturing their stories, we want to do it in the best form using the best technology available to us. And so, you know, we're only able to do that so much with on our own. And so we thought this would be a great opportunity to allow our listeners out there to kind of contribute by becoming a monthly patron of uh, the Diffuse Congruence podcast. Patreon.com slash Diffuse Congruence. You can find out more about how you can become a patron and and, and what um, different levels of sponsorship and patronship, if you will, uh, gets you little prizes and little opportunities to be a part of the show. So our goal is to continue the momentum we've had over the last uh, five years. It's hard to believe, coming up on five years now. We want to keep that enthusiasm and that energy going as we expand in new and interesting directions. And the only way we can really do that is with your help and your continued, not only spiritual support, but yes, your financial support too. So we're really hoping you will join us as we take Diffuse Congruence into the next leg of its hopefully lengthy journey. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if I could just add one final note to what Zucky said earlier in terms of what your valuable contribution can do, in addition to allowing us to kind of up our production quality and, and get better equipment, um, you know, we want to we want to get the word out. Uh, so far, again, you know, going on as many years as we as we've been doing the show, it's been exclusively we have relied on essentially word of mouth of our listeners, and uh, you know uh, that has gotten us this far, and we're re- and we're really grateful grateful to that. But I think that with uh, a little bit more investment um, into some advertising and promotional uh, uh, endeavors out there, we can get help. We can help spread the word because uh, Zucky and I feel very confident in the fact that all it is, is it's a matter of people listening to the show. I think the content sort of speaks for itself. It's really just about introducing audiences to the show. Please do uh, visit patreon.com slash diffuse congruence. Become a patron today and you can become a monthly patron and uh, it'll really help us in putting out the best podcast and the best diffuse congruence that we can put out there. So that website, once again, is patreon.com slash diffuse congruence. Sign up to be a patron today and you will start to see the impact of your contribution almost immediately. So thank you once again for supporting us, for coming up on five years, and we're hoping we can keep that energy and that enthusiasm coming for a long time to come. Welcome to Diffuse Congruence. This is episode 63 of the American Muslim Experience. My name is Zaki Hassan, and I'm here with Pervez Ahmed. Hey, Zaki. Good to be back. Uh, I feel like we haven't sat together in a while and recorded, so it's always a pleasure to be able to do that. 
Uh, it is, and it's uh, especially a pleasure this time because of the guest we have joining us. We are here with uh, Dr. Abdullah bin Hamid Ali. He is the founder of Lamp Post Productions and the Lamp Post Education Initiative. He's also the head of Zaytuna College's Islamic Law Program. He teaches family law, inheritance law, business law, jurisprudential principles, and Hadith science at Zaytuna College. He's a lifelong student of the Islamic tradition, being born to Muslim parents, having begun a serious study of Islam in his early teens, and Pervez, we're really excited to have him with us. Always a pleasure, and we've been wanting to have Dr. Uh, Ali on for some time, so uh, welcome, Dr. Ali, to the show. Maybe uh, kind of, uh, well, like we like to say, you know, kind of like maybe t- take us back to the origin story and where your story <laughs> sort of begins. Uh, I think you uh, originally are from Philadelphia? Yes, I'm, yeah. I was born in Philadelphia. Gotcha. Uh, but I uh, spent my first almost 11 years of my life in Chicago. Oh. Yeah, so my family I moved to Chicago directly. Immediately yeah. after I was born, we moved to Chicago, and I, mm-hmm. I, I moved back to, we all moved back to Philly in 1984. Oh, wow. So you get an idea of pretty much how old I am. Oh, right. yeah. That's I probably okay. shouldn't have said that. You know, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's doing math now. Right, right, right. right. So, um, so, yeah, so basically, of course, from that point, I grew up in Philadelphia, yeah. and yeah. I culturally, I guess I would say I'm largely a Philadelphian. Right. You know, Right. I know that becomes a thing. Like, I mean, mean, having someone like Dr. Jackson on, you know, being from Philly becomes a thing. So, uh, just a culture. So, what what makes one a Philadelphian? (laughs) Oh, boy. I guess some of it, some of those things are like, uh, I don't know, love of (laughs) cheesesteaks. That's right. Now, of course, everybody loves cheesesteaks. Once you eat them, especially. Um, (laughs) But, but I guess, but, but on a more serious note, I guess. For me in the African American community, I guess the, um, some of the um, distinguishing um, marks of, of someone being from Philadelphia is, I guess, somebody who somewhat likes to rumble. I yeah. guess yeah. that's part of yeah. it, and I think that uh, Philly has that reputation. That's right. Yeah, uh, you know that the, uh, we're not really uh, the uh, city of brotherly love, right, notwithstanding. Right, right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to back down from a fight. You know. Yeah. And I we, think that, we've all seen the intro to Fresh Prince. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, on 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 the, playing ba- ba- uh, basketball. On a couple of guys that were playing. Right. right. That's right. Yeah. You know, but then you can think about going way back to you know uh, Declaration of Independence. You know, yeah, sort of right. uh, the history of Philadelphia. Yeah. Right. Our, so we call it so our forefathers and I guess mm, that culture true. sort of trickled down right. even though on a very micro level Rocky yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Rocky that's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. references yeah. Um, and then I know certainly mm-hmm. there's a rich history of that even within the Muslim community yes right, right? and we've had like for example or, um, mm-hmm. Dr. Bagby on and we talked mm-hmm. about like the Dar es Salaam mm-hmm. movement which mm-hmm. I know mm-hmm. um, is yeah which has its has a lot of history in mm-hmm. Philadelphia, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, right. Now, now, your own personal affiliation and, and sort of connection. You mean Darul Islam? Dar- yeah. I'm sorry, Darul Islam. Darul Islam, sorry. Darul Islam movement. Uh, and we can maybe get into that. But um, mm-hmm. in terms of your own background, I mean, are, are you born into a Muslim family? Because I know your, your your mother was certainly very yes, involved in the right. Imam Wartin community later yeah. on. Well, even before that. Even before that, with the nation. My, yeah, my, my, my parents... Uh, all, both of them had entered in Islam via the um, first resurrection, you know, movement, or what we call it now, you know, the, through the early Nation of Islam under the leadership of the, the man who was known as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And once he passed away and his son, Imam W.D. Muhammad, had taken over, they yeah. followed him Got into uh, mainstream Islam. And uh, uh, my grandmother, my father's mother, actually accepted Islam around that time as well. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> so in that sense, um, when people generally ask me, was I born a Muslim, I usually pause because it's very complicated It's very mm. you know, to, to sort of explain exactly um i say yes and i say no uh i say yes in that naturally if my mother and father were muslim then you know islamic islamic law teaches us that if one of the parents are muslim then you're muslim uh on the other hand um me and all of my siblings we grew up as right more cultural muslims Mm -hmm. uh and that um we knew assalamu alaikum um um, i don't remember ever seen a Quran until perhaps my teenage years. Mm. Uh, I mean, the Arabic language, you know, in the Arabic language, you know, when I first saw one, I just really fascinated about it. And this was in Philadelphia by this time. So I was after, yeah. I was 11. That's right. And I first saw an actual Quran in my life. And so, like other kids in society, we grew up with the, you know, with normal, non-Muslim kids. And, you know, we would f- travel to Philadelphia from Chicago every year. 
during the Christmas season, you know, my aunt, you know, she mm -hmm. would buy everybody gifts, you know, so we go there. We didn't, we were still Muslims, but we just would come for the gifts and spend time with family. <laughs> right, of course. Um, yeah. Watch these, you know, Christmas uh, specials, uh, Rudolph, you know, the Red Nosed Reindeer, the mm -hmm. Grinch, uh, Frosty the right. Snowman, all those things, you know. So Charlie Brown. Yeah. Right, right. Charlie Brown, that's right, all those things. So, <laughs> right, right. So I think you and I are kind of same generation. Yeah. Uh, Zucky's yeah. a little yeah. bit. A, a wee younger, but a little bit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so and then um, so both your parents then had come within mm -hmm. into yes, Islam through right. the nation of Islam, yes. and then later mm -hmm. with the what second resurrection then would be right. with, with the uh, right, uh, right. With exactly. Imam Warthi and Muhammad. Right. 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 Well, okay, um, and then sort of then you um, yeah. public schooling, high mm -hmm. school. Oh, uh, public school. Yeah, my entire life. Okay. My entire life is in public schools. Gotcha. Um, and uh, um, in my early teens. Yeah. I made a decision that um, I wanted to really be Muslim. Yeah, that's what uh, I was going to ask. When is that moment right, of uh, right. we all, yeah. Yeah, exactly. People and, even born into the faith, right? right you have that moment right, of, an, of an right. epiphany or a right. process. And, and how, how did you get there? Yeah. Well, I, I think that the, what led to it had a lot to do with the fact that um, as we were growing up, um, the only person in my, in my household that used to pray was my father. Mm. Uh, and we just knew there was a time, you know, that everybody had to be quiet. My father would go in this room, he would, he would make salah. Um, and so he and my mother got divorced, and years later, um, you know, living with my mother. And when we moved to Philadelphia, I eventually... I was a break dancer, so uh, I uh, was part of a group that we were going around the neighborhood battling different other groups. And and so one particular day, right. we were battling this one group who had a number of Muslim, Sunni Muslim uh -huh. members of their group. Um, while we were out there, the mother of the of the house had had heard that I was a Muslim, so she invited me in. Okay. And when I went in, I saw them making salat yeah. and I said you know that's what my father used to do mm. I remember my father mm. doing that uh, and eventually I actually saw an actual Quran with the Arabic and I said like, oh my god I said like, what the heck does that say yeah, you know, yeah, I was really right. fascinated with the with the very fact that that actually was a language right um, and um, eventually I, I started to learn basic things about wudu and salat and then I, I went to the uh, the masjid eventually, and I actually did take my shahada. Okay. Right, so that's what I say, oh. like you know, yes and no. You know, right. so I was yes, Muslim. Are you were you born a Muslim? I say say yes. You know, and at the same time, I feel like no because it wasn't a conviction, of course, okay. uh, in that sense. You know, but it, de it developed into a, a conviction, and I guess I would say my path of learning sort of started there in my early teens, and then uh, you know started to read more. English books, and then I started to study Arabic um, on my own. I actually tried to teach myself Arabic uh, through. You remember the book? Is used to be a book, blue book called Easy Tajweed. Right. I don't know if you're familiar yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah. You know, so there at the beginning of it, there was a section that had the Arabic alphabet. Okay. On it, you know, so I started to just write out the Arabic alphabet like mm -hmm. fifteen letters, fifteen times for each letter, mm -hmm. and within about two weeks from me starting that. I found a, a teacher, an Arabic teacher. He was from Eritrea. Uh, yeah. uh, we called him Imam Barra. He was a local um, traveling teacher. Teacher, you know, right. Who studied in Egypt, okay. you know, originally from Eritrea. <clears throat> and he was giving um, um, classes at Clara Muhammad School in Philadelphia. Okay. So we would go there twice a week, right. um, study with him. Uh, and then eventually I would transition to my other teachers in the city right. and sort of goes up and right, right. from there. No, I mean, yeah. you're, you're certainly not the first guest we've had who's had either, uh, in, like, is originally from, and we've alluded to Dr. Jackson, but, like, we've had other guests on the show whose stories intersect. Mm -hmm. So there's the, uh, what, State Street Mosque? Is that, is that, am I... Um, well, no, probably you, the State Street Mosque in Philly. I'm assuming that probably we call the Islamic Center, uh, right? In Philadelphia, right. Uh, Islamic Fin Center. Well, I think like Dr. Jackson takes the Shahada, meets right. Dr. Right. Omar, that kind of. Yes, that's thing. yes, that's, that? that's for them and their generation. Yeah, but by the time <laughs> yeah. I was growing up, it was already closed down. Oh, okay. Yeah, the mosque, that's okay. that mosque had been closed down by the time I had uh, to become more active in the masjid. Okay, understood, mm -hmm. understood. And then, uh, so the, yeah, mm -hmm. so, so you encounter a Quranic teacher, and mm -hmm. you're now um, mm -hmm. studying the Arabic language, mm -hmm. um, and 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 like you said, you even take your shahada, so now you're fully mm -hmm. practicing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and then, what then sort of propels you to, or compels you to want to go abroad, study? I mean, is this mm -hmm. under after undergrad, mm -hmm. during undergrad? I'd love for you to talk about that. Well, do you go to school in Philadelphia, like for? Yes, I, I was. In, I was in. Well. It's again, yeah. yeah. Please. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
so I, I'm learning, yeah. and I develop a, a knack for Arabic, I guess you would say. The Arabic for me was much more just a, it was a hobby. It was something I just liked to do. Mm-hmm. I was interested in, in um, knowing what people were saying. And one of the reasons I really wanted to learn Arabic because I started to get tired of people telling me, um, like I remember one particular issue was the matter of whether or not we should pray Juma, you know, mm-hmm. you're right. so after, and Dhuhr as well, you know, yeah. so some people, one, one time people say, oh, pray Dhuhr after you pray Juma, you know, and then sometimes, oh, no, you don't have to do it. Mm-hmm. And I just got tired of being told different things, you know, so I said, I'm going to start studying. You my own. So, access, I, right, right, right. Exactly. so I started to um, focus on Arabic, the Quran, um, 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 the teachers, and so, so I went to public schools, with the high school, uh, and after high school, I didn't go directly into college, yeah. but um, I was just simply working in the community. I would sit. At, I actually did security at one of the schools, local schools. Mm-hmm. And I would sit at the desk and I would study my Arabic. And people used to always tell me, "Oh, you should go overseas. You go overseas. Yeah, you go overseas." Yeah. Right. And, and I just really wasn't interested in it. I just, okay. just want to know what Allah says, and that's it. Uh, and then, um, and then uh, eventually, I decided that okay, I'm going to ask, follow this advice. And mm-hmm. I started to consult people. And people said, "Oh, you should go to Saudi Arabia. Oh, you should go to Egypt." Mm-hmm. You know, I said, oh, "I'll go." And I just said, "Oh, whatever, wherever you tell me, I'm going to go." But then yeah. they would change their mind. Oh, you shouldn't go here because of this. Right. You know, so so eventually, I just got tired of that, and I decided, well, you know, what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Egypt. So I got together with the, uh, there were some older brothers who bought me a one-way ticket to Egypt. And my plan was to go to Azhar University, and I was going to walk up to the door, and I was going to knock, tap, 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 right. I'm here, I want to study. Right. <laughs> right. That easy. They just open up and say, well, here you go, here's the classroom. Right. Yeah. So, so, but, but one day before my departure, uh, and one of those brothers who was advising me, he came to my house and he took me out and he sat in the, sat in the car with me for about an hour trying to convince me not to go. Mm-hmm. He said, you're going to starve, nobody has no support. And I said, no, I'm going to go. Little peace of me, little I'm going to do it. <laughs> but um, eventually um, I came in and I decided not to go. But immediately after that, I registered for Temple University uh, into computer science. So I said, you know what? I just listen. I didn't want to do this anyway. This is yeah. your idea. I'm right. gonna. I'm just gonna go get me make some make some money and get married, and you know that's it. You know. <laughs> so so I started um, my major in computer science, and I think it was 1995. Um, I was focused the first year. Uh, the second year of my studies, I I got uh, um, I discovered the Arabic section of the library. Oh wow! <laughs> right. So I found myself spending more time. You know, yeah. studying, looking at these Arabic books that I start to regress or so fall behind in my my computer science studies. Right. And it wasn't really what, what was in my heart anyway you know, right. to begin with. And it wasn't what was Because 95, really. you're probably like having to take like COBOL and... and <laughs> right, right. Yeah. This right. is the four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. C plus, C plus. <laughs> you know, right, right. C plus was cutting edge. <laughs> right, right. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. so. right. that's yeah. around the time I'm doing the same thing at undergrad. So. Oh, really? I my own know. background. <laughs> yeah, computers. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Do you... Now, yeah. you're at Temple. Yeah. I, I can't help but ask, like, I mean, because just knowing the history and the timeline, Dr. Blankenship is there? That's right. That's right. He was there. And this is where... I meet him. I meet him. Ah. Uh, it wasn't the first time I met him. I met him actually at a at a earlier um, youth conference. Okay. You know, but as a teacher, yeah. I met him at you know at uh, Temple University. So I started to take alongside my computer science, Arabic, and Islamic studies classes. Yeah. So I was taking some graduate courses with him. Nice. <laughs> and um, Dr. Ma- uh, Mohammed Ayub is there. Dr. Mohammed Ayub was there as yeah. well, right? Yeah. Actually, that's, uh, actually, he I didn't take and his focus course was Quran with him. more than history. It was Quran, yeah. right, and Sufism, right? right? Yeah. So I did take. I had one lesson with him, you know, when I was there. Like it was part of Dr. Dr. Khalid's um, um, his his course. Mm-hmm. You know, when he had a you know a a. a um, a uh, guest teacher, you know, Dr. Mahmoud, Mahmoud came in to talk yeah, about definitely. Sufism and, and Shiism. Mm-hmm. So, um, so at any rate, you know, so I'm, I'm with him and eventually we started to have private classes in his office as well. But, <clears throat> excuse me. We developed a bit, a bit of a close relationship and uh, eventually I, I decide one night while I was at work because I used to be a security guard at a hospital mm. uh, and I used to work the night shift and um, I was listening, I was actually listening to uh one of Sheikh Hamza's old uh, lectures. Uh, Alhambra was, Productions on cassette? No, no. I can't remember if it was, <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I don't yeah. know if I got it directly from them. Right. But I had a copy. Gotcha. Or something, however yeah. I got it. Yeah. Black, <laughs> black market, the other way. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it was a lecture I had actually heard about two or three times before that, but it was called The Prerequisites of a Mujtahid. Yeah. And Sheikh Hamza was just on fire. Yeah. 
And um, and it was the first lecture I heard of his that really made me like him because I heard him prior to that and he was just much more subdued. And I was like, this is, you know, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but then he was just really on fire. And while I was there, that 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 morning, I guess you would say, going into the early morning, I right. just I said, you know, who am I fooling? Right. I might as well just go overseas and just do what's already in my heart. Right. So the next day, I went saw that the Blankenship and I asked him. I said, you know, where do you think I should go? Yeah. And so he said, well, we don't know anyone who studied in Morocco, or studied in the so That's right. Maybe you should go there. Right. You know, so I said, okay, I'll do that. Mm. You know, so I visited in the summer for two weeks just to check right. out the uh, the terrain. Right, uh, right. Then. You know, I've visited the Wazara Okaf and I speak to the cats behind the sort of general secretary. Okay. And he told me, you know, I had my letter of recommendation from Dr. Khade because they, they knew him because they had invited him for the King's lessons in the past. So they told me, if you come back in September, you'll be uh, matriculated. Don't worry about it. Right. You know, of course, it didn't happen just like that. But, right. you know, Got that's it. How, it, how it started. Now, even prior to that, yeah. I mean, I would just want to pause before mm-hmm. we get there. Um mm-hmm. What's your own personal affiliation then at this point with the Imam Warthin community? Have you kind of felt that it that that you had grown past it, grown beyond? Yeah, it? yeah, largely. I mean, okay. it was it wasn't okay. something. Even though my mother and father were well, my father more so than my mother, I would say, it was, yeah. it was definitely very committed to the community. Yeah. And my father actually used to give me a lot of his books to read, and 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 um, you know, but I, I never felt. Um, the sense that I, um, that I was compelled, yeah. you know, or I guess you say I'm trying to use a, 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 the right word, but you know, I was compelled, felt compelled by anything or anything that would lead me to say that I had to come out publicly and declare my allegiance uh, to 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 the Imam, yeah, may Allah have mercy on him. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, around that time as well, there was just a lot of a uh, lot of different ideological tendencies that were in the oh. community. You know, Salafism was on the rise. Uh, there was a lot of um, anti uh, uh, WD Muhammad oh, sentiment yeah. as well in, in the black community mm. around the time. Uh, of course, outside of the, the followers of the Imams, certainly, as well. certainly. right? And so, and even among a lot of our prominent Imams, there, yeah. you know, alhamdulillah, reconciliation has occurred. You know, but back then there were a lot of things discouraging yeah. us from following Imam WD Muhammad. And as a matter of fact, there was a one someone who wrote a book anonymously had written a book around that time called um, Imam WD Muhammad federal agent of the government yeah. um, and you know so I'm like well we don't even know who wrote the book right you know but people still they you know yeah. they, they gravitated towards it because it kind of it um, affirmed their own biases that they already had towards the imam um, yeah. and of course now we know that the imam was largely before his time in a lot of ways right. um, nationally both among the African American and the um, the immigrant we call the immigrant community yeah. Um, there was a, as we know, there's a sentiment sort of um, about, you know, America is not a legitimate country to live in. Everybody right. has to make hijra. It used to be trying to get khilafah. You know, all of those type, all of, that that type of talk as well. Right. Right. And, um, Part and parcel of 90s right. Islam, as I like to say. Right. Yeah. Or Islam in America. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, you can't yeah. call yourself American. Right. Uh, all those different things. You know, and he was, Muhammad was like, you know, we're American Muslims. Yeah. You should vote. You should participate in American society. Mm-hmm. And, 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 it, and it seems interesting that, like, right now, not many people really give him credit, That's right. you know, that he do, because everybody's flag, waving flags and you know, all types of things nowadays where, you know, that's and of course, right. he wasn't necessarily about waving the flag. That's right. Uh, at least that's not the way I interpret him. But um, but he would definitely, um, um, he, had, he was, he had a, a lot of forethought, you mm-hmm. know, and I think a lot of wisdom that sure. uh, wasn't appreciated when he actually um, articulated it, you know. Yeah, at the mm-hmm. time, yeah, that's right, that's right, and 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 notwithstanding, like, notwithstanding, just the the, the kind of like you said, the uh, influx of like the Salafi Dawah that was coming in. I'm sure some of the influences of the immigrant community mm-hmm. with the Tablighi Jamaat and whatnot, which right. had also found some mm-hmm. uh, following within the African American community in particular. Right. Well, Jamaat to well, yeah. not so much to the Jamaat to okay. You know, I mean, that definitely Philly. there was definitely that contingent. You right. know, there's people who went in that yeah. in that direction. Some people went in the direction of the Sufi sort of Mazhabi direction. Ah. You had those. We are minorities among us, you know. But like, I think that largely the uh, the effects of uh, like the um, Ikhwan and, and sort of like oh. the Modudi type of um, um, the readings of Modudi and his even type the African American yes, right, indeed, yes, really, there's no doubt. I mean, uh-huh. I grew up, you know, I mean, in 
you know, Mo Dudi was, was was major, you know, in our in our community. Say Koto, uh, even like say Koto, yeah, right? Yeah. Say Koto, uh, uh, interesting. Uh, Mo Dudi, okay. yeah, right. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Okay, um, and then uh, how about like as you mentioned, like sort of Sufi movements as well. So are we talking about like uh, how. The St. Cory Institute, uh, who am I? Forget? No, the Muhammad Sharif. Yeah, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. No, Muhammad Sharif. No, no, this was before Sheikh Muhammad Sharif became um, known in our community. This is uh, the, when I speak of the Sufi communities, yeah. you have basically two, for instance, yeah. in Philly, you're talking about either the, those who are followers of um, Sheikh uh, um, um, uh, Abdul Qadir Jinani, okay. you know, you know, yeah. Abdul, not the famous Jinani, but the Pakistan, ah, yes, yes, Pakistan, yes, that's right. Imam Jinani's uh, um, followers that's from right. the Jamaat al fuqara mm-hmm. um, and then you had the followers of Bawa Mahayuddin, you know, who was the oh. Sri Lankan um, yeah. mystic that um, uh, built the Bawa Mahayuddin Mosque in, in uh, Overbrook, uh, the Overbrook area of Philadelphia, oh. which actually was... Um, both, but, but there were Jews, Christians, and Muslims who actually all together built that masjid. Interesting. Right, you know, so he was, uh, yeah, he was a uniting sort of figure for those people, right? So they were minorities. That's a stream we really haven't right. covered on the right. show, but yeah, mm-hmm. I, I think it's fascinating history there as well. Um, so anyway, sorry, going back to where you were, uh, now you're admitted into uh, okay, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne. Uh, now if I'm not mistaken, you're the first American to be, I'm, I'm the first. Westerner there you go. to graduate from the College of Sharia. There, right, okay, that's right, uh, right, of, of right, right. Um The first American, yeah. right, the first Westerner to yeah. of any of the colleges, you know, that we're familiar with is Sidi Abdul Hadi at Honor Camp, who teaches at Georgia Tech. Really? Okay. Right, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's yes, yeah. Pretty tall, yeah, yeah, white yeah, man. I am. Right. He's a very humble individual. Yeah. You know, really, he's very right. lovable. Yes. Right. And um, you know, so he studied in Marrakesh. You know, because you have see the Karbiyin. There is the old the traditional school, which is in the Masjid itself, the Central Mosque. Okay. And then you have the the newer um, schools, which were um, established or founded like in the early fifties. Right? Yes. You know, there are a number of colleges. You know, there's the, um, the College of Sharia, which you can find in Fez, and there's another one in Agadir. There's Kuliyat al Din, which is in Tetuan. There's the Theology College, mm-hmm. and then there's Kuliyat al Lugha, the language, language College, which is in uh, Marrakesh. Okay. Yeah, which Sidi Abdul Hadi studied. Ah. <clears throat> so he he he's graduated of the, of the language college. Mm-hmm. I graduated from the Sharia College. In Fez. Uh, in, in Fez, right? Yeah, 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 right. That's right. So. So basically, um, um, those the newer colleges are, of course, set up more along the lines of the more con- modern uh, uh, modern colleges. Uh, yeah, so, I, but I did do studies in both. I did studies. Uh, of course, my degree is from the modern college, right. you know. But I did spend time with the in the old the old the, the okay. central mosque itself. I would go on weekends and study with some of the mashaykh there yeah. in some of the in, in attend some of the circles. And in particular, there's one scholar that um, that I developed a very close relationship um, from the uh, traditional school was Mufti uh, Muhammad Muhammad Tawil, who who passed away back in 2015. Mm-hmm. It was like one of the major muftis of, of Morocco. Mm-hmm. You know, so I used to visit him his home. We would study uh, fiqh and also fiqh as well in the circles with the students who would study there as well, and um, and uh, and there were others other right. teachers there as well. Naturally, that's mm-hmm. right. That's right. And how long? How long were you there in total? Then in, in, uh, for my studies, I just I did the four year program. Okay. It was a four year um, Ijaz or Young, um, which you know we generally say five four years is like a BA, but it's probably more like an MA. I would I would I would contend, mm-hmm. but you know it, it's a thesis and a lot of it's a really very intense program. Mm. Um, but at any rate, you know it doesn't matter. Like considering bachelor's, you know, <laughs> right, right. Matter. Now, did you yeah. focus on any particular like within Sharia? Like, was it the Maliki mm-hmm. school? Of, for example, well, yeah, Morocco is a Maliki. That's right. It's a Maliki That's country. Right. So, but are there options to study non-Maliki? Yeah, I mean, you can. Okay. You know, you can study uh, other than the Maliki school there, right. but the uh, the country is is very um, committed to its Malikism, <laughs> right? The, the ulama generally are very committed to the to the Malikism. You come across Salafi yeah. scholars there. Uh, there are some humbly scholars. As a matter of fact, one of my uh, my um, my classmates who was a humbly called himself a humbly. And there was one who was a Jafari. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the Humbly uh, student who, who used to always say that, you know, that the, 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 the Humblies, there are the people of the Sunnah. They are. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he was yeah. very, like, uh, right. dogmatic about yeah, it. Right. <laughs> right. Right. His humbleism. Right. Right. With his Moroccan. Mm-hmm. So, but, but in terms of the, um, uh, 
in terms of like study of like things like we have a comparative law, you know, okay. comparative comparative uh, Fikr mm -hmm. was one of our courses, you know, so you study the various that I had there, right. um, mm -hmm. especially in areas of do like penal code, mm -hmm. um, study the um, in the uh, um, in, in the uh, inheritance law, you know, family law. Uh, there are a number of areas you can have that have that come it comes up, and so um, there is some diversity uh, yeah. there, but. There, you 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 don't. Everybody knows you you. There's no. Um, uh, the average Moroccan themselves will tell you that we're Malikis. That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So, so they're very proud of their, their right. Malikism. Right? That's yeah, right. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. it, any encounters with with with, with, with uh, like Americans that were kind of sort of coming in and out at the time? Mm. I mean, at that time, mm. we're still talking. Okay, so like Sheikh Hamza was he in, mm. in Morocco? Well, the first out. time I met Sheikh yeah. it was yeah. in Morocco. Okay, I, I, yeah. Yeah. right. So in 1998, the Rehla, I figured, the, the ah. actually was ha was it was it in was. Morocco in the Qadrin, right? Right, oh, uh, right. Okay. It was in, in, in the Masjid itself, and uh, Sheikh Hamza had brought the contingent of students there, and the Moroccan scholars and the and the Wizara, the ministry, actually decided that that. Uh, you know, no, no one's teaching here in this masjid except for the ulama of Morocco. Mm. Right, so they took over the rehla and, and pretty much said, "Listen, you know, we'll teach." While you. it was going on, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So you would teach, you translate, right? You know, but they also became hosts as well. So yeah. basically, what they did is that they gave room and board. Mm. They were feeding the students as well. They took students on tours, so the country kind of sort of took over the entire program. And, right. and so, in the midst of the uh, all the those alterations happening. I happened to be visiting the the masjid one day. Sheikh Hamza had saw saw me and, and found out that I was studying there. I was a student. He asked me to help translate, you know, one of the circles, you know. So so I was translating the circle for Sheikh Muhammad Tabi mm -hmm. <laughs> with my yeah. teachers, you know, in Aqida and in uh, it was Aqida and Fiqh. Okay. Right? So they were reading the Ibn uh, Ibn Asha. Ibn Asha. So. Um, so that was my first uh, encounter, the first experience of, of meeting Sheikh Hamza was right there in Morocco. Okay. Uh, the um, what's interesting is that the first four months or five months I was there, yeah. the only time I would speak English was on would be on the weekends, and that's usually uh -huh. where I would go to the post office to call my mother. Um, outside of that, it was just Arabic the entire time, mm -hmm. and I actually it was only about again like fifth month when I encountered any Americans right. or anybody who was an English speaker mm -hmm. you know I visited the American Language Center there Aleph Institute and I encountered some Americans and, and then from that from that point on but while I was there I mean a number of people come through of course uh, uh, Mamzaid right as a matter of fact Mamzaid came through from Syria during his final year mm -hmm. and he pretty much dropped this whole library off at my apartment <laughs> mm -hmm. so a whole year all of his books were right there nice. in my apartment nice. you know and so then he eventually went back to Syria for the exams he came there to study Quran okay. uh, and then he went uh, uh, during the exam exam times to Ab Abinur mm -hmm. Um, Sheikh Jihad Hashim Brown came through okay. for a little while, uh, and he spent about five days with me, and then he went down south and was studying school, school texts. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheikh Ramzi Ajim from Canada, from mm -hmm. Toronto um, as well. He was a friend of mine. Hey, we, we, we crossed paths there. You know, some other people as well. Okay. You know, so okay. There are a number of people that I, that, I, that I ran into, but I was the only person right. who was studying in the Kulia. That's in the right, college. in the college. Yeah, that's right. So four, yeah. So four or five years. Are you married at the time? No, okay, no. Okay, no. Okay. <laughs> and then, are you coming back to the United States in and out, like during the holidays and what? Yeah, I came back twice. Okay, okay. Yeah, I returned twice. So, right. uh, so after my first year, then uh, after my third year, I believe. Okay. But then, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, once you graduate, you return to the states. Yes. Uh, okay. Right. And you're back in Philadelphia. Yep. I went straight back to Philadelphia. Didn't know why I went. To, what, what I was going to do for for money. Or I was going to ask. Like, like, so what? Yeah. What then? I mean. Well, the thing was interesting about it. Thing about it was that I was leaving. My original plan when I was actually leaving to go to Morocco was that I was going to come home in the summer and save up money. I was going. Could I ask my supervisor at the hospital where the security? While I was doing security, I asked him if it would be okay if I came home and worked. Mm -hmm. It would be possible to work in the summer. He said, "Yeah, no problem. You come back and you can you can you can work." And so I was going to save up money and then go, and I was going to live in the dorms with the students there. Uh, but one week before I left, there was a a group of people who had come to to me in South Philadelphia who were parts of the um, we call the United Muslim Movement, like, like not United Muslim Mosque in, in South South Philadelphia, which actually was. Built and established by uh, Imam uh, Luhman, oh. uh, well, Amir Luhman, yeah. uh, um, uh, Kenny Gamble. 
Do with people know is Kenny Gamble, yeah. you know, who is yeah, I don't know if you I've never heard well, the name. Well Kenny Gamble, yeah. Yeah, I mean you 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 just look him up later. Well, okay. Kenny Gamble is pretty Alhamdulillah Allah has blessed him, you know, immensely. You know, he's he he's he he got his fame through music. Hmm. Uh he's famous for uh a number of song there are a number of songs, you know, Mrs. Jones and others. I mean so he'll produce these songs and hmm. and but he also is involved in real estate. So he built this masjid, and so he and people who worked with him came to me and said they were want to offer me like a like a scholarship, mm-hmm. you know, while I go away. You know, they said they, said they, said they liked me, right. and uh, they um, uh, were, um, you know, pretty much agreed with the things they heard me say when I gave my khutbahs and things like that. So they wanted to support me. Okay. So I didn't have to stay in the dorms. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I, I just um, actually got my apartment when I, when I went there. So, um, but, um, yeah, so basically... Uh, it sort of starts like that, uh, and how I ended up um, uh, getting my support. You know, so I was connected with that community. There's yeah. another community which was had merged with the United Muslim Mosque or, or United Muslim Movement called Kuba Institute, mm-hmm. which is really my home mosque, my home school. So mm-hmm. once I finished my studies with Imam Barra from Eritrea, yeah. I then started to study with ah, the uh, prior to even going to Morocco. Right, exactly. So, yeah. so, so basically, I mean, I had already studied in the U.S. for a solid, like, seven years. Yeah. You know, I had been fluent. I was already fluent in Arabic. Fluent in Arabic, Arabic. Like yeah, that, you know, So to prior to leaving to go to Morocco. That's right. Uh, and uh, you know, I was studying books with Dr. Khalid Makership in his office. We were reading nice. books in Arabic. And and so I, I was already prepared. I had already memorizing quite, memorized quite a bit of Quran. Mm. Uh, so... So my earlier teachers, my Quran teachers, uh, Imam Anas uh, Muhammad and Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Anwar Muhammad, who were at the Kuba Institute, um, I studied Quran with them, among other things, right. in Arabic, and then eventually uh, the university level, then eventually goes, I go to Morocco. Uh, Dr. Jackson anywhere in the picture here at this point? No, I know. You don't, no. you don't cross paths yet? No, well, yes, we did cross paths. Okay. We crossed paths um, while I was I was still helping out at Cuba. Uh-huh. Dr. Jackson was invited uh, for one of their fundraisers, and they came and he spoke at one or two fundraisers, and that's when I had my first introduction. Had he already Jackson. left Pennsylvania? No. Like, no, I mean, you pen? No, no. I, Oh no, he was gone. He, he was, was gone. Yeah, he was okay, gone. That's so, why I didn't know him. Ah, yeah, got it. So while he was studying at UPenn, yeah. you you didn't encounter him. No, I didn't encounter yeah, him. Yeah, okay. just, I would have been too young. I mean, to, to even oh yeah, that's there. right. And, and remember too, I might have even been in Chicago at the time. Oh, right? that's, that's right. Because right. right. what I understand I is Dr. Jackson, right after he converted to Islam, because I think he converted in seventy eight. 1978, he converted. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. So I would have been in Chicago, right? Yeah. So, ah. he, so right after the conversion, brothers were telling me he went straight into university. He, he we, worked for a few years. Yeah, just and I only, yeah. the only reason I know that is because yeah. he we've had him on the show and he mm-hmm. talked about working for a few years uh, and mm-hmm. then decided to go back and I think mm-hmm. started at Temple and then eventually transitioned mm-hmm. to UPenn, mm-hmm. uh, uh, where um, uh, MacDesi was. Yes, right, George, right. George, George MacDesi, right. George MacDesi, mm-hmm. who becomes his sort of advisor. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, interesting. So then, um, and then, so now you're back and in in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, You've got the Cuba, the, the, the Cuba Institute mm-hmm. that's sort of supporting you, or yes. you've got some work that you're doing there. Yes, I mean, right. functionally, well, imam of the community. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, I didn't ask you a question, so no, <laughs> I'm glad you came back yeah. to this. But like, what happened when I came home? I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, so I was right. going to I was going to go back to my security job. You know, I, I wasn't. I didn't care. I said, listen, you know, I learned, learned I studied the dean. I'm going to go back. If I have yeah. to go back to the security, I'll do that. But when I came back again, my former teachers said to me. Listen, you know, we don't have a lot we can offer you, but, um, you know, we want you to come and, and to teach you know, here at our school. So I started to teach uh, Quran, Fiqh, Akida uh, at the uh, at the Kuba Institute. I would teach from any, from ages three, I mean, from third grade all the way up until high school. Okay. All right. So I had a number, a lot of work that I did, you know, so I did that for, for a year. Uh-huh. And at the close of that year. What year well, is this, by the way, that you're back from Morocco? Yeah, I came back. I came back 2001. Right. Oh, so I returned okay. 2001. At post September 11th. Right, yeah, right, oh, right, yeah, yeah. right, yeah, right yeah. before. You know, no, actually pre September oh, 11th. Yeah, okay. I came back in August and September 11th was wow. right the next month. Right. And I remember um, even brother calling me and to wake me up about this. He said, "Turn on the TV." I sat down, and, and it was just like so unbelievable. I don't believe that I got up from my chair for what, three hours, three or four right. hours. I was just glued to my chair. It's like so unbelievable that that, that was right. happening. Um, but at any rate, um, so I, I came back, and so this is 2001, and so I taught for a year. Okay. And uh, before the close of that year, I received an offer 
by um, uh, there was a, a imam's position that opened up in the one of the state prisons in Chester, Pennsylvania. Um, the former imam was a Palestinian or well, Lebanese, I'm sure, Lebanese imam uh, was chaplain. Was well, cha- well, yeah. one of the chaplain. Yeah, it was right. chaplain. You were pretty it. much right. Was, right. You know, because they have like it was a full time position. Oh, you okay. know, and um, right. and the prisons in Pennsylvania in general. They, they they have a general rule that they have to hire a full time Christian chaplain, usually Protestant, and a full time Muslim, you know, chaplain. Just given right. the population the state, the state, size right. Right. of exactly. the inmates. Right, right. exactly. Right. Wow. So you know, of course then you have your volunteers, you have your contracts, you have right. others who are underneath them. You know, so it was a full time position. And I wasn't thinking too seriously about it at first, you mm-hmm. know, but I said, Okay, I have a look at it and look at it. I put the application down for a little yeah. while. Then after a while I filled it out and I sent it back in. Yeah. And then eventually I started to think seriously about it and I went to the interview and um, found out later that the warden, you know, loved me. And she was like, you know, so but people told me as soon as she walked out the door, she said, you know, that's our man, that's our man right there, <laughs> right? So mm-hmm. and so I started this work and I did that for for five years. Yeah, I did that for five years and it was it had its challenges, you know, but it also yeah. had its its very um its high points as well. Right. Uh, and towards the end of that that the for the fifth year I started to cons- reconsider w- what my future. I actually was looking for other work and and I started to think about potentially going back overseas uh, to try to find some work. I looked into like People like like the Qatar Foundation, and there were other other uh, possibilities. And I remember I saw that Dr. Jackson was on the board of the Qatar Foundation, and I called him. He didn't answer, but I left the message for him, and uh, so he didn't call me back till about maybe four four days later. But but the very I think it was the very next day after I left that that message, I got an email from Imam Zaid, who's mm. already out here in Zaytuna. Mm. Yeah, and he says to me, "What do you think about?" Um, coming out, moving to the Bay yeah. for a couple of years with the plans to move back to the East Coast after us. And I was like, well, okay, let me think about it. You yeah. know? So then we got into other details and eventually I accepted the offer. Right. Know, and at that time it was yeah. what, for what? The Zaytuna Institute? Well, still Zaytuna Institute. But they were doing like the beta program? Was that? Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, okay. exactly. The uh, the uh, seminary and the seminary program was... Was, was, was starting this, off. Right, well, actually, no. It was no. Already, already going. Oh, it was okay. going. It was probably... It was it was finished third year. Started just started its fourth year. Mm. Just started its fourth year from what I understood. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I came at the right in October okay. of 2007 for that. And so I was started off teaching the um, there were five students we had at the time who graduated the mm-hmm. following summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was teaching um, uh, Hadith and mm-hmm. Tawheed and, and uh, all sort of stuff right. uh, to those students. You know, so I mean, my title at the time was just scholar. And how many students scholar. were part of that? Initial batch. Initial, I think it was more. I think it was more like ten. Ten. Yeah, right. originally. And uh, it was still in Hayward. Yes, right. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. well, well, well. When I came, it was in Berkeley. Now, so what happened is that you know, so they had just left Hayward in the oh, summer, okay. that summer, two thousand seven. Yeah. And they had already moved to Berkeley, and there was a small office that Zaytuna had been utilizing there on Austin Way, right off of a Shattuck, okay. near the. Um, the Bart, the the, the Bart, uh, ah, the, Bart yeah. uh, the Berkeley Bart entrance, Station. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so they were there. Mm-hmm. We were there. So we we finished up there, mm-hmm. and uh, and then right after we graduated, those students, um, uh, they turned to the side. Well, okay, listen, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna have a whole year off. We're gonna focus on trying to start Zaytun to college. And right. so I was like, well, what, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Uh, I don't know what to do. And I said, well, you brought me out here, and now I have nothing to do. So I decided, well, well I might as well go to grad school. Yeah. Right. So, oh, so wow. a lot of That's the things I'm a doctor now, not because of like I really had some vision. <laughs> the it just kind of just happened organically. That's just, right. So, so you start I, at yeah. GTU yeah. when? Um, so this this graduate been, theological union. Right. Right. Yeah. right. GTU. So this should have been. So that was 2008. So I probably was. It was the spring of 2009. Okay. okay. So I GTU the spring of 2009. Right. I want to. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, yeah. just about your experiences as chaplain. I mean, I'm going back a yes, little. That's right. mm-hmm. Anything like that really stands mm-hmm. out in terms of being really formative for you, or you know, like something that maybe changed, you know, your perspective about the community inside. No, I'm really, I'm really glad you asked that question because I personally tell people all the time that that. Um, that had I not had that experience, then I wouldn't be who I am now. Hmm. And I would not trade it for anything in my life, you know. I, I feel that it really made me much more mature than I was 
prior to starting the job because my attitude See, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of classism in the Black American community, you know. So, like, I, I guess I kind of come from a. I mean, I really want to shift the conversation into that anyway. Right, so right. I really, mm-hmm. I think maybe that would be a good starting point. I mean, we can talk about Zay Tuna right, and right, that. Right. We would kind of cover that history. Yes, yeah, right. I think what you bring really, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, among a lot of other things, mm-hmm. is just I think that insight that I'd mm-hmm. really love to uh, a word we like to use here, unpack mm-hmm. with you. So mm-hmm. please, sorry. Yeah, right. So so again, this is just the classism in in our in, in our community is such that for those who who didn't who never been to prison before, you okay. know, that they're generally well, in the past, I'm not totally sure how things are now, but when I was growing up, there was somewhat of an attitude that those who've never been to prison before had about those Muslims who had been gone to prison. So we sort of okay. saw ourselves as better than they, than they were. So um, so I, before I got the offer to to actually work in the prison, my I, I always just say to myself, I've never would would do it, you know, because I just don't want to deal with that mentality, you know, mm-hmm. because I, I've, ex- I, I've experienced it too much out on the street, you know, brothers who were in prison before, and That's what do they think, yeah. right, so, so when I went inside, so it's like a, when you say that class is, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's like a badge of honor, then? yes, yes, right, uh, yeah, right, okay. so that I have not been to prison, got it, right, okay. That's it, right, right. That's it's not the correct. badge of honor that you yeah. have, no, no, or that it's, I'm, it's, you know, I've got it, the opposite, yeah, right. Of course, I mean that is that does exist as well, right? Right. Yeah, the, the other so way around. You're talking about yeah. we, this is the attitude within the black yes. Muslim community. Yes, right. right. So it's like a subset yeah. of a subset. Yes, right. Totally. Right. Which is fascinating because again, we've never kind of mm-hmm. talked about this in, yeah. on the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is yeah. Mm-hmm. So sorry. So the, both ways then. Yeah. That's both ways. Right. Exactly. But your perspective was kind of mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah, like I never went to prison. I never mm-hmm. had that experience. Mm-hmm. So and nor do I ever want to have right. anything to do right. with that. Exactly. With people right. who have. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't been to prison. I mean, I have family members who have right. been to prison, you know, right. a brother, you know, who's been to prison a number of times, you know, but right. again, the way that we see him. I never asked about how many siblings <laughs> right. you have, sorry. Well, I have three sisters okay. and, and um, three brothers, you know, but I would add fourth one, you know, my oldest brother's adopted, okay. you know, so it's, we're like eight, um, awesome. but my mother, big, from big, my mother. Yeah, seven, yeah, seven big family. Okay, okay. So. okay. Sorry. And, and I'm right. the youngest boy of the boys, you know, and I have two younger <laughs> sisters. Ah, so, right. So, um, so so basically, again, my attitude was 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 like this. I had this attitude about people who had been to prison, I, and I didn't want to have anything to do with them. But then I just started to, again, I had this desire to see and explore. Yeah. And when I got into the prison and I, and I started to talk to these brothers and meet these brothers, I started to see that, I mean, listen, the, the humanity. Yeah. That's right. You see the humanity of them. And, and you even meet people who you say to yourself, you know what, um... All it would have taken for me to be here, just a small slip. That's right. Right. And you start to think like, I used to hang out with guys, you know. I mean, even Muslim. My Muslim friend, most of my friends were Muslim growing up, right. you know, but they used to bad, bad things. And, That's right. you know, so I'm Muslims who used to sell drugs. Yeah. And I used to hang out with them, and nobody, none, they never would say to me, like, here, why don't you help me out? Yeah. Right, you know, but all that's all it would have taken is like, okay, give me a dime bag or something like that, and then right. the police come up and you stop you, and you got a record. That's it. You have a record, that's and right. it messes up your life. You know, right. every time you go apply for a job, yeah. you know, you can't. Yeah. You know, we, so, but for the grace of God, yeah, right? I mean, exactly. You know, it was not that right. I mean, far so, removed, right? Something reality. like that, or even like always getting killed. I have got, had a guy try to shoot me in my head before. You know, so it's there are a lot of different things that could happen. Uh, to an individual in um, in, in, in those particular um, neighborhoods, and, and mm-hmm. so so basically, um, you just come across these people. You see the humanity. Uh, uh, you know, some of them like you, some of them don't like you, like you as well. And I developed. I, get, I I would say that I've learned more about me mm-hmm. through that experience than anyone else. Wow, right? That's right. You know, both bad and good. You know, because I learned the type of potential I had as well. You know, and I give you an example of that. Like, um, about 85% of the brothers who were in the prison, they were identified with as being selfies. Yeah, I was just about and, to ask kind of what, where that right, is. Uh-huh. Right, they identified with being selfies. But, um... Now, why is that, though? Is, well, it, is it the prevalence of Salafi dawah in the prisons? Well, that's part of it, but I, I, I'll tell you what a brother Please, said to yeah, me. Yeah. One brother said to me, he's, this is what he said to me. He said, the reason why I am Salafi is because um, I look, on my, look upon my life and when I look at it, I see that the reason why I've always gotten in trouble coming in and out of these prisons is because I didn't, I didn't know how to, uh, I, I, did, I refuse to, to, to follow the law. 
To follow the, the law. The law. The law. Yeah. yeah. I refuse to follow rules. Got it. Right. Right. And this is the strictest thing I could find, you know, so I need this for my own oh, discipline. Right. Right. This is this is the way what he what he explained about right. it. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So and rationalize the attraction to yes, the right, Salafi. Right. Dollar. He felt it had to be strict. You yeah. Know? He said like it was strict mm. and it's something for me. This is what I need mm. to, to reform my own character, okay. to make me better, to get rid of the discipline that I need so I don't go out get out of prison then come back again yeah right, you, know? you know of course even though it still happens with most of them you know but but at least that's the way he saw it mm-hmm. you know, what, what the attraction was and then also the other thing i think is empowering i mean the, the selfism is an empowering doctrine it is right? so right. it's like you tell you listen man don't be listening to what they say ask them for the deal you know the you know, you find out what the deal is yeah, the yeah, evidence and that's it and you, you go with it yeah you know and and, and if you tell somebody that as opposed to saying to you, listen you don't know what you're talking about. Be quiet. Shut up. You know, the other man know best, you know, and just listen and follow. Most yeah. people are not going to go for exactly. that. You know? So that's one of the main reasons right. that selfism appeals to so many different people. Right. And, so, and I was, which I was going to ask, yeah. but I think you already answered the, the attraction to that, uh, ideology, mm-hmm. even within the African American community mm-hmm. at large, mm-hmm. not right. just within the prison system right just right. I, I don't want to no, 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 like I you know align anybody unnecessarily but it's just um selfism is um can make people feel like uh, it's a family mm-hmm. i mean everybody's together everybody's saying the same thing everybody's dressing the same way Good point. you know it's kind of like a, a big family or some people probably call it like a gang or whatever something like that mm-hmm. but but it's it, it, it experience of camaraderie, right. you know, that there's a rapport that everybody develops, you know. And, I mean, not uh, as a pejorative, yeah. but it's, it's kind yeah. of tribal. Yes. It's, it's tribal. Right, exactly, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and many people like that. They, they've never experienced that. They know what that's like, you're right, you know. And then it's like, everybody's doing it, right. So you find like most, many of our, well, I mean, most, it could be most, I, don't, I haven't got the, the numbers there, right. but, but many of the large number of our youth are Salafis. If you go to the Masajid, you'll see that almost all the people who are in the Masajid are older people. Like, I'm not youth anymore. You're not youth anymore. That's and a lot of the older brothers, like, you know, the, you got to give it to the youth. And, no, I'm not youth, man. It's a matter of time I'll be 50. You're talking about, you Correct. know, so. so it's like, I mean, we sit here at, at the Muslim Community yeah. Center, and just last weekend, I was telling Zaki in this on the way here, they, you know, they brought me in to speak to the high school youth. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the most challenging mm-hmm. talks I have to give mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. I can't, it's really a different generation, yes, man. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, I, I have a hard enough time. Deal with my fourteen-year-old at home, you know, fifteen-year-old at home. So it's like, let alone speaking on a room full of them. Yeah, and you, yeah, I know you have yeah. a teenage daughter as well. Yes, so, yeah. you know, yeah. Sorry, I completely yeah. relate to you. Yeah. Right, right. So, so that's an interesting yeah, point. So sorry, going back to the yeah. within the prison community, right? Yeah. Yeah. So again, that's like yeah. that's one of what, what one of the brothers told me is that because mm. again he needed discipline, he felt that this is the particular um, group, you okay. know, ideology which is going to grant him help him to get that discipline. Um, uh, so, um, in terms of the positives, right, right. in terms of I myself, I, I felt, I learned how to be more prophetic, I feel, you know, mm. through my interaction with them, because, like I said, 85% of them identify as Salafis, and I'm not a Salafi, that means they don't, they don't, they don't like me right, right away, you know, so I'm right. always hearing about attacks, yeah, I, I've never, they never come to me directly, but the brothers on the blog, they're reporting back to me, this person said this about you, you're off it, you know, you're okay, this, yeah. this, or that, so, but, but when they would come to me, they all knew that if they needed something, have to right, that I was gonna hold the the fact that our aqidah is different from one another against them. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. They knew that about me. So they would say, Well, his aqidah is jacked up, but he's a good brother. <laughs> I mean, to me, that's enough. That's that's all that matters to me. It's like you as long as I'm a good brother, I can care less about what you got to say about my aqidah. You know, cause, cause at least at the end of the day, my maqida kept me out of prison. Yeah. I'm gonna lie, you know, right. you know, or I'll, by by law's grace, you know. Right. But I sometimes I get angry, I would say that. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, when I hear about them talking about me and making life difficult for other prisoners, you know, but yeah. um but I'm gonna lie. So beyond the eighty five percent, what would you say then maybe if we could just complete that yeah. that, 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 that mm-hmm. pie, if you will, in terms of a, a group affiliation within the within yeah. the prison. Right. Again, and we're talking about specifically yeah. like Pennsylvania. And oh, York, sorry. Yeah. Area, right. You're not talking about all no, no, the country, right. but like in, in where I was, again, if it's 85 percent Salafi, then you have. Um, I couldn't really say exactly the, no, the precise breakdown of right. everything else, but but it's a combination of of of, of Hanafis, mm-hmm. right? Muhammadi Hanafis, um, Shafi, 
um, or just people in general who are sort of we call sort of neo traditionalists or Got it. Um, yeah, or Sufi, okay. you know, Sufi background, okay. right? Got it. So some uh-huh. you know, Nation of Islam, you know, you have those uh, some of those. And how about the, the Imam Muhyiddin community? Like, are they? Yeah, they're there. Okay, they're, they're there, but but they would be in minority. Got it. Extreme minority, at least where I was. Mm. Right and over here, perhaps you know, in the on the West Coast, mm-hmm. I hear that in the prison system that. Uh, Imam W.D. Muhammad's community largely okay. uh, have, um, well, not necessarily that they are the inmates, you know, but in terms of the imams, you know, ah, that, the, that they, work with the right, yeah. exactly, they're, they're largely their community that has the greatest influence on the right. inmates inside the We've had uh, Imam Abu Qadir on the show, for example. No, mashallah. Yeah, 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 you know, we had him at the program. That's yeah, right, I saw that. Powerful. I saw that. And we'll get to the program, but I really want to. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, sorry, where were we? Yeah, we were talking about your experiences mm. then. Mm. Uh, you, you said as a positive. Mm. Um, what did it like from a ne- like not a negative mm-hmm. well, you, you you alluded to it and you don't have to necessarily get into this if you're not comfortable with it but what did it maybe what insight did it give to yourself mm-hmm. that you didn't like I mean sometimes of course I would lose patience right. with 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 the brothers yeah, mm-hmm. again because um, you know still young young we younger me yeah. and um, Again, like the example I just gave about like sometimes just People, rubbing in their yeah. face that listen, I'm going to go home, right? Yeah, you guys are going to still be here. That's you know, so, you know, it's so bad. You know, I'm just really here trying to help you. Yeah, I'm pro- I wouldn't have done that. I mean, that probably probably wasn't the, the best way to mm-hmm. you know to to deal with them. Um, but um, but, it, but other than that, I right. really you know, go ahead. Now, is there some segmenting mm-hmm. within the community or within the mm-hmm. like in, in within the prison system? Mm-hmm. Among people who are so-called lifers versus mm, like, mm. right? People who are doing a stint. Yeah. Do you see? How yeah, does that well, where play I, out? yeah. Where I worked, my the institution where I worked was a, we call it a medium security okay. institution. It was not maximum. Got it. There's a possibility you can go home and right. still be on parole. Right. You know, but a pre-release means that you can potentially go home prior to your minimum. Right. Ah. Right. So, so these are like a lot of the goody two-shoe type of you know inmates who are right. coming through. But we did what we have about what we did, did have at the institution about thirty. And, and is that based on good be, quote unquote good behavior? Good behavior. Yeah. You know, things like sometimes it could be maybe the individual's first time conviction or okay. you know a number of issues like that. Right. So, right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And then mm. any insight that it mm. gave you to the sort of. Like the penal system in America, like the whole the, the idea oh, of like yeah. the prison industrial complex. Well, quite quite a bit. I mean, it's this you. It's well. I'll give you a story. Yeah. Um, the commissary is where the inmates have to go to buy their, their little goodies. You know, so of course they had their meals, but like if you want to just buy something extra, you know, treats, you know, buy a calling card, like a phone card, you have to go to the commissary. And um, I remember one year. Um, well, first, for, for the first issue is that the, the calling cards were either the minimum you can buy a calling card for was fifteen dollars. Okay. Now on the streets you can find a calling card for two dollars. Yeah. You know, but they had to buy a calling card fifteen dollars minutes or whatever. Okay. Right, exactly. So fifteen yeah. or fifty, like you know, fifteen or fifty dollars, right? Yeah. So right there, they're juicing the inmates or their families for whatever monies that they're. Wow. That they're receiving, you know. Now the inmates are working, and so they're getting paid an average about twenty five cents an hour, you know, for the work that they do inside the prison. So they are making a little tiny bit of money, you know, and then their families may make up for whatever ever else is coming through. So, so then they have to buy a calling card, fifteen dollars. Okay. All right. So um, there was a a a a, um, a new rule that had passed while I was working there, which said that in order for you to call your family. That your family has to have Verizon right. wow. in order for you to call them, yeah. in order for the call to go through. Right. And so if your family had someone else, AT and T, or they had you know you know someone else, or you know, Comcast, or whatever, whoever you know telephone company is, yeah. they had to change their phone company if they really wanted to talk to their loved one or allow for them to call them, you know, call them from the, from the, from the institution, right. right? So, so, so they made a lot of, they were make, definitely making a lot of money off, off of, uh, right. off of inmates. Um, and were, that's, and that's the result of Verizon, mm-hmm. right? Lobbying with, yes, right. right. Yeah. Now, this particular facility is private, mm-hmm. was it private? Was it government? No, this is government. It's yeah, state. Okay. It's a state, state institution, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a state contract. Because I know a lot of the a lot of the federal facilities mm-hmm. even get out outsourced to private yes. entities, right? Mm-hmm. Right. right. I right. mean, and, and, and mm-hmm. they own like there's like I think one or two that own 
the vast majority, or operate, I should say, not own, but operate a vast majority of the prisons. Right. 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 So that's why I was curious. But, right. wow, fascinating. So right. and there was abuse, I mean, general abuse sometimes between the... Yeah, Verizon, right, right, and you had to be yeah. a... Wow, that's... that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's yeah. I mean, that's just one example. That's yeah, just one, right? Where, yeah, of course, right. you know. So you saw the racket right. for what it was. Yes, right. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. Now, um... Uh, I guess we've already kind of alluded to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can talk about um, mm-hmm. the the conference that you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Yes, right. And, and some of the issues that you discussed mm-hmm. there. Right. right. Uh, and then I'd like to maybe talk about some, a few mm-hmm. other things, mm-hmm. and then we can maybe wrap. But um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, please tell us about the uh, conference. Right. The, the conference is uh, was titled the uh, first annual Black American Muslim Conference. Okay. Um, the theme was empowerment through healing. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea was to bring together a number of um, Muslim leaders, scholars, among others, to have a number of conversations which were specifically uh, um, related to matters uh, happening in the African American community or the Black Black American community, but issues. While at the same time they they influence us or touch our community, but they, they, some of them are much broader. They actually um, uh, apply to the Muslim or the or other communities throughout the country in general. Right, so, so um, issues like uh, you know, um, like like leadership, like for instance, have our leaders abandon us? You know, mm-hmm. which is a matter that a conversation that comes up quite often among a lot of uh, Black Americans, who, where they you know, for instance, all these guys they they get their jobs and they go work for the immigrants or everything like that. You know, so okay. let's have a conversation about, sure. about that. You know, you know, it, did they leave us? You know, have they? You know, why, what what might be the reasons why? Uh, they may not be here. What is it we can do to actually uh, make them come back? Um, uh, things like that might, might relate to, like again, like crime. You know, social outcasts. You know, how do we? How well are we doing in terms of reincorporating them or making life easier for people who perhaps were, you know, formerly incarcerated, once incarcerated yeah. and now they, they're back. They come back to the community. You know, how, what contribution have we made? You know, has other communities have other communities make contributions as well and one of the reasons I wanted I chose that panel because I wanted to actually show that there is much more um, cooperation right. between African American non African American okay. you know, communities you know when it comes to uh, um, that particular issue in terms of like it's like I, I presented to people Imam Abu Qadir and then also Imam Moish uh, Imam but he's a general operations manager of the Islamic Center of Irvine uh, brother Amin Rafiq uh, and I actually first became uh, became acquainted with him through um, Shigarami Nasur uh, yes. through Taiba Foundation, right. Right. and he has a wonderful story <clears throat> uh, that that was told. We had a wonderful uh, like panel there. It was very emotional. Uh, um, hopefully, you know everybody get a chance to see it. But um, you know, those are a couple of things that should relate to like relationship between men and women. You know what are the uh, the the obstacles to female empowerment? Um, um, what is the extent of um, 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 the relationship between they call the indigenous quote unquote immigrant yeah, right, quote unquote right. Americans, which right. is actually our final panel we had okay. related to like matters of race and racism. Right. Um, uh, so there are a number of panels that we right. had, and there are some lectures as well. Right. What is the uh, is there? Uh, what can we still learn from West Africa? You know, there's still a connection between mm-hmm. the uh, Black Americans here in West Africa. There's some things that we can appropriate still, right. which would help empower us mm-hmm. uh, and to heal us as well. So um, it was a very ethnically diverse um, uh, audience. Um, even though the majority Black American, right. uh, um, but but it was very very uh, very, very nice to see. I, I mean, how many times were you asked yeah. like, you know, I- I'm not Black, can I attend? You know, that kind of thing. Right? <laughs> you know, Did people yeah. feel that kind of reluctance or yeah, hesitation? Yeah, yeah, it or? happened. It came up a number of times. Okay. It came up a number of times, okay. and I think that has somewhat to do with me in general. I think that because uh, because like you know, with Lampo's uh, education initiative, I think that uh, there's it's sort of sense that some people have that. Uh, that land post is only about like black people and black stuff yeah. um, but I had to make it clear even there at the program that you know this is not about saying that um, only black Muslims are important the, 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 the point is that that black Muslims are important too yeah right right and uh, and so in, in, in a lot of conventions or conferences that happen uh, throughout the year that uh, you you even though it may not be stated mm. um Explicitly by the organizers is very clear to me that the organizers themselves they have their own vision, 
Mm -hmm. right, for the national Muslim community, what a real American Muslim looks like. As a matter of fact, there was an event that we just had a few weeks ago. I actually attended it. Um, ready to one of the the mosque in the, in the Bay Area. I won't say it. You pr you'll know it, and some people will know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But there was an event related to called you know our American American Muslim, American Muslim identity. Yeah. And and I know that originally the panel was supposedly supposed to consist of only um, there were two Pakistanis and there was one Egyptian and one Syrian person of Syrian origin. But at the last minute, they the added, decision, they added a, an African American, American right. yeah, somewhat, and it's a very, you know, I guess it was a sort of a token uh, sort of example. But and it, it actually backfired on them, in my opinion, because the individual they invited got on stage, and when they asked him about his Americanness, he said, well, I don't consider myself a bit American. That's right. <laughs> that set the whole tone for the whole panel. He was the first one they asked, yeah. uh, or, the, or, or, the, or the moderator asked of the panel, and that was the question, and... That, that he kind of led with that, <laughs> right, right, right. yeah. And so, so for that was me, fascinating. right, right. You know, it's so, so for me, it's not, it's not so much about being critical, yeah. right, in the in a very negative sense. You know, yeah. being constructively critical of right. our community, you know, right. Muslim community, yeah. you know, black and non-black, everybody. Right. It's, 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 it's just okay, American Muslim, and I totally understand because, for instance, in the media, Islamophobia is where well, I see it as less. Islamophobia is largely directed towards, you know. We call it immigrant, immigrant yeah, right. right? Islamophobia means anti uh, is anti Arab racism, but Arab becomes anybody who's perceived of not being from America, you know. So yeah, Islam yeah. is sort of this this religion which has nothing to do with American core values. Uh, people are coming from over there, invading exactly. this particular country, and bringing all of this mess, you know. And they're trying to implement yeah. Sharia law and right. all these other things. You know. So right. so that's the narrative. That is. And so I totally understand why when we see you on the news um, in a lot of these panels that it'll be a, represent, there's not a lot of ethnic diversity, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I believe that that's intentional. I believe that's intentional by the media that they want to continue to reinforce the idea that Islam doesn't belong here. Mm -hmm. And I mean both the right and the left. Yeah. That's my opinion. That, mm -hmm. that, you know, that both of them want to reinforce that particular idea mm -hmm. that it doesn't belong here. And so for me, I don't get upset that I see um, the lack of diversity in yeah. the in that um, I don't feel sort of like slighted. Okay. By it. that doesn't mean I don't get. Yeah. Upset. I'm, I'm, I don't mean I don't get upset by it, by understanding what they are doing right. wrong about there. But I don't get upset about. I don't feel slighted. But there are a lot of black Muslims who do get feel slighted. It's right. like why? What are our voices? That's yeah. right. You know, and all of this. You know, and and for me, I'm I'm so okay. No, I just I understand why our voices are not there. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not really all uptight about it. But there are a lot of people very uptight about this. Mm -hmm. So when they see this. Right, like a panel. Uh, I, yes. I mean, I think I think what you're saying is yeah. is indicative of uh, the the sort of propensity people have for for reductive, uh, you know, categorization. So in mm. other words, you have mm. the black experience mm. and you have the Muslim experience, mm. and the idea that those two would intersect in yes. a meaningful way right. Right. doesn't enter into it. You know, yes. so for right. example, when mm. when when Muhammad Ali passed away, yes, right. it's like you had the, these competing. Mm -hmm. I, like the idea of him as a black Muslim right, and that right. being something distinct and right, unique right, right. wasn't really part of the conversation. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean I agree, you know, and, and sometimes I see that happen with um Malcolm or I mean, yeah. I mean uh, like I had to tell a brother the other day that um that uh that you know that the Malcolm letter from Mecca uh, is like the Dr. Dr. King's I have a I have a dream speech, have a dream you know, speech. for for like for like mainstream America. It's so like, true, you know, for Muslims, it's like you know the, the letter from Mecca. Yeah, like, that's so you true. Know, so you wow. see, he, he went to Mecca yeah. and he gave up all that black nationalist stuff. That's right. like, well, actually, he didn't. He you didn't. Know? Right, that's right. <laughs> Not quite. That's yeah. right. And like so, you said, reductive, yeah. and that becomes yeah. sort of the defining characteristic yeah. of that person. Mm -hmm. Same thing with, mm -hmm. with, with like you said with Dr. King mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that speech. Not yeah. mentioning the fact that, for example, his last speech that he gave. Mm -hmm. Was yeah, he's talking about you know railing against the the, the, the system you know right. anti war war talk, yeah, right yeah, you know, military and, industrial complex yeah, right exactly uh, imperial, anti imperial right, anti imperialist right, anti material yeah. and also anti materialistic thank you well. he was he talked about that you know yeah. this sort of this you know material hyper materialism yeah, that's uh, right uh, that's that right. people are uh, but so, but that doesn't involved. fit into the sort yeah. of. Santa Clausization yes. of Martin Luther King, <laughs> right, right. you know? That's a way to put it. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's that's very true. That's very yeah. true. Like, right. like, yeah. 
But I mean, I, I, and so mm -hmm. then to going back to the conference, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like, look, we want to talk about these issues and we want to do it in a, in a way that's constructive mm -hmm. and meaningful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are issues. Mm -hmm. Hey, guess what? There are issues that are unique to the black American community. Yes, right. So right, guess what? Yeah. We're going to have a conference mm -hmm. that speaks to that. Right. Now, right. you're more than welcome mm -hmm. to come and attend and participate. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to have this conference right, because right. there are issues right. that are unique to this experience. Right, right. Well, think about this. That aren't always represented on these larger yes, conferences right, and right. these larger platforms. Right. And, and again, and it's only because, and I, and I don't believe that people do that because they're, um, that they're mean spirited, right? Right. You know, I don't. I, don't, I wouldn't say that at all. And that's it's, it's people. There's certain things that people they're just not considering. Yeah, yeah. There's certain things they're overlooking, right? Yeah. You know. So, so like, but think about this. It's like, and it's not. And I say this not to make it a in any in in an equivalent analogy. Okay. Right. Let's say instead of Muslims having a fundraiser for Syrian refugees. No, no, no. Let's not have a fundraiser for Syrian refugees. Let's have a fundraiser for all Muslim refugees. You understand, you yeah. know, because everybody's plight is the same. You know, yeah. the Rohingya is just like yeah. it was happening for people in Libya. It's just like it's, the people it's all lives right. matter. Right, right, exactly, right, the, exactly, right. The so, conference, yeah. right. So, and and again, it's not to. Well, it's funny you say that because I can't help but think of that. The all lives yeah. matter. It's, yeah. it's uh, because you know, when you yeah. said, "Look, it's not to say that the the other experiences aren't important," yeah. but guess what? The Black American experience, the, the Black American Muslim experience, is also important. Yes, yes. Which right. is the same kind yeah. of right, you yeah. just replace, you know, yeah. Black Lives Matter yeah. or you know, All Lives Matter. But here's yeah. another thing too. But Please, you know, yeah. Here's another thing too. It's like, like it's interesting. That I've noticed this for years that. The only time it seems that Muslims are raising a major objection about like race politics, mm. uh, in that in that Muslims will say Islam has nothing to do with race. Yeah. It only happens ironic ironically when they see black people themselves um, coming together to talk about their own empowerment. Mm, yeah. Right? You understand? You know, it's, 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 it's real ironic. It's like, it's, yeah. well, we're, when we start talking about racism, you can't talk about racism, racism without talking about um, anti-black sentiment to even begin with. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you say, Islam has nothing to do with race. Why are you waiting until black people now start talking about their issues yes. to say that Islam has nothing to do with race? That itself proves that you have some hypersensibility yeah. about blackness. Yeah. Right? Right. And, and, um, right. Which, like you said, it's like, Islam has nothing to do with the race, yeah. but tonight I'm going to this dinner that's for Syrian refugees right, right. or about the Palestinian crisis. Well, think about this. Nobody said anything about the Arab Spring. Nobody said anything about the Arab Spring. Arab Spring. Mm. There you go. Arab Spring. Nobody said, oh, this has nothing to do with Islam. All Springs right, matter. Right, right. All Springs matter. <laughs> right, right. Right. Fascinating. Yeah. That's so no, true. I mean, I mean, I think there's... The, the implication there mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. the the ex the black Muslim experience mm -hmm. can be swapped in for any other yeah. ethnic Muslim group, which is just right. demonstrably false. Right, exactly. We know that. Right. You know, right. I, I've been I can't help but thinking about. And I'm sure you you've, mm -hmm. you're aware of this mm -hmm. with the Stefan Clark story of Sacramento. Uh, I didn't. Know, he was Muslim. Did you know yeah, this? I, I I just read that recently. I, was this the, uh, the the gentleman who was, was shot, shot in his backyard? Times. Oh really? By, oh by really? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I didn't know he was Muslim. Yeah, I just okay. uh, is that accurate? I don't. Know. I don't. Know. Well, I, I didn't know his name either. I kept for some reason. I'm sorry. I yeah. probably should. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but I mean that that's yeah. that to me. I was having this conversation yeah. with, with a friend. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, that's that's something that that. You know, Indo Pak Muslim is not something we think about mm -hmm. as, and yet this is something. Mm -hmm. Why was he shot? Right. Was right. his blackness a factor? How? Yes. I mean, let's. Right. I, I don't know, but yes. Mm -hmm. right. 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 I mean, right. yes. And, yeah. and that's unique. That's mm -hmm. distinct. Right. It's an unfortunate yeah. reality, mm -hmm. but right. it's something that not right. all people are are contending with. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, right. and and, it, and we would like for it not to mean as much as it does, you know. That's but it's, right. it clearly does, you know. So, um, we can't talk about white supremacy yeah. right uh, and then at the same time talk about how Islam's you know has nothing to do with race you know mm -hmm. so I mean, yeah. we, we can't I, we can't let that come out of our mouths you mm -hmm. know we have to remain, remain, remain consistent you know and, or, and we can never accuse anybody of doing something based upon some racist racist motivation right, right. So, you know um, um, if, but, but, but again it's not we all know that Islam or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yeah Right, his teachings were, you know, anti-Jahidi, anti, you know, sort of, 
racist, yeah. right? And uh, he didn't he tolerate any of it, any right. anything that any sort of expression of it, you know. But but at the same time, um, um, there is some things that did happen. That's right. right? Things happen in this press to them, right? Mm-hmm. You know. Now, of course, we at the same time we we understand that people have different types of diseases. People have different types of, you know, sort of. Um, um, uh, you know, again, let's just call them diseases for now. You know, different vices. Or vices. All that as right. well. Um, right. And we don't condemn them and say and damn them. Say, okay, once you got it, you always got it. Right. right? They say, no, no. Okay, some people can change. Right? Right. You know, there's a, perhaps maybe there's a way that we can approach this in a healthy way where the people who are struggling with certain types of thoughts about others can actually overcome them. Right. Mm-hmm. And they can think differently about them, and it might take some time. It may take some time for them to get to that point, you know, but they need to first understand where it came from, right? Mm-hmm. Where those ideas originated and how the, they've been doc- indoctrinated into these sort of ideas um, um, from for actually for centuries, realistically, you know. And um, I remember the, even Bugs Bunny, like the old Bugs Bunny cartoons. You remember the guy Hassan? You remember Hassan mm-hmm. from Bugs Bunny with the big Hassan turban, Chow. with the big sword? You're Hassan Chow. Hassan Chow. I get that. Right, right. Really? Right. It goes way back. You know, oh, okay. Hassan, you can look it up on YouTube. Yeah. You know, people would yeah. see me in school, Hassan yeah. Chow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember the character though. Anyway, so <laughs> what was the trope? What was the well? Well, again, the the, the violent to Arab. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not not. To, yeah, but yeah, the yeah, other guy yeah. is the Weasley money grubbing. Yes. Like it's the t- yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, yeah, these yeah. sort of these uh, yeah cultural tropes and stereotypes that are yeah, and really they're just taken at face value. Yes, yeah, you know? right. yeah. We laugh at them, you know, but like, but like it has it has a, a, a major impact right. on on our on our, on our right. psyche. You know? And I think the conversation yeah, we're know. having <laughs> is, is certainly a conversation that isn't. I mean, I think we can broaden it beyond mm-hmm. just the mm-hmm. Muslim community. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly what we're seeing happening, uh, I mean, this is a broader conversation. We mentioned Black Lives Matter, for mm-hmm. example, mm-hmm. around race. Um, you know, uh, this year, it, we, we, like you, you mentioned Looney Tunes or Bugs mm-hmm. Bunny, but mm-hmm. Hollywood is having yes. this conversation. Yes, right. And, you know, we, we've had, mm-hmm. you know, movies like Get Out and movies mm-hmm. like um, uh, Black Panther mm-hmm. that meant something that mm-hmm. were sort of mm-hmm. cultural uh, landmarks in mm-hmm. terms of mm-hmm. what they represented. And I would just be curious to hear your mm-hmm. thoughts um, on, on, on that and where you right. see kind right. of... Yeah, I saw both of those movies. Okay. I saw Get Out and I saw uh, yeah. Black Panther. Get Out, um, to me, I just found it, um, I found it interesting, very entertaining. Yeah. Entertaining mm-hmm. movie. I sort of just saw it as just entertainment. Right. You know, but of course, there definitely are these sort of racial undertones which are there. You know, this distrust of white people. Certainly, yeah. for you. Yeah. You know, and, and naturally, uh, they could have a deleterious effect on on um, the psyche of yeah. many people. Um, um, the Black Panther, definitely, I think the positives uh, are much more outweigh any negatives that may, anyone may be able to highlight right. from the movie. And uh, I saw it more so as a, an attempt to try to reconcile between Black Americans and Africans. Yeah, right. I mean, it starts Africans. in Oakland and ends right. in Oakland. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, more than... And the know, filmmaker being Oakland. Right, Oakland. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, right. So... And I, th- I think it was pretty brilliant. Personally, I didn't go there expecting to see see that in this okay. storyline. I I would just get super. I'm gonna watch a superhero movie. That's all I'm going to watch, you know. Sure, but right. the, the the way that they weave that all together, I thought was pretty amazing. Right. Um, and of course, and some people say it was Islamophobia. Or some people some people say it was anti-black, and I say, uh, you know, That's but a stretch. It's, you know, I mean, right. I, I know the <laughs> anti-Islamic yeah. part you're talking I, about. I've, I've, or heard, what a, I've heard a critique yeah. that that I, I disagree with, but I mean, I, I, I'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> that the the only African American character <laughs> is portrayed yeah. as being sort of the the uh, complete villain of the right, piece, right, and you know, right. he might feel sympathy for him, but he's right. still demonstrably bad and how that's sort of the mm. movies stack in the deck yeah. I, I disagree with that critique but I'd be curious yeah I mean I also disagree with the, the, the critique um, and I and I because I think the only way that you can you can maintain or sustain that particular um, um, conclusion is that you uh, accept that most African Americans they are like him. Yeah, right. They are like uh, Killmonger, right? Yeah. You know, that this is the norm. That all all people, guys from Oakland, after, I mean, that's just what that's they're true. like. That's right. true. Right. You see, so so and the movie you, itself is disproving that. Right. right with exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So him and then his his girlfriend as well. You know, both of them are like, these sort of crooks. Yes. You know. So and I, and I, and one person who said that to me, I said, well, maybe the the movie is actually more anti thug 
it's not mm-hmm. anti-black, but it's anti-thug. You know, right. so I mean, so all are most black people thugs, right. right? You know, so I can see you saying it's anti-black then. You know, uh, right. but 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 <laughs> since I don't believe that most black people are anti-thug, I would or or, or thugs, people, right? Thugs, general, right, exactly. Yeah, right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right. Then I'm not going to take ownership of that. Yeah, yeah. Like kind of kind of labeling right. of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I I push back on it reflexively because I'm like the the, the director is a smart enough guy yes. to, and he's speaking to his own experience mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. the way the character is portrayed he's a result mm-hmm. of you know he he is the way he is yeah. because of the main characters mm-hmm. and so in other words it's a set of circumstances mm-hmm. that's unique yeah. only to him unless Wakanda is a real place I don't know right. anything about right? right so it wasn't his it wasn't being raised in Oakland that made him that right. way it exactly. was it was his father being murdered and him being abandoned, which did not, that's not, America didn't do right. that, you know? Right, it was interesting, like, I remember hearing Dave Chappelle recently, he said that, uh, that, that um, it, it may be an old statement he made, but he said that, uh, uh, people think I'm from the hood, you know, but, yeah. but you know, but I never, I never, you know, objected to people's assumptions, you know, when they, they say it, you know, uh-huh. it really, and, and this is, yeah. this is good because if we bring this back to the conference and this yeah. is one of the Thank reasons you. I wanted to have the conference as well, because yeah. I wanted to put people of different classes and different levels of understanding together to have actually have a conversation, you know, and, and actually show the audience that it's possible to have a conversation about things even when you may disagree with with, with other other people, uh, but but, but um, there's a tendency to think of the Black American or the African American community, or whatever you want to call them, as a monolith, monolith. right? right. Um, and um, there's an author uh, Eugene Robinson who's yeah. worked for the Washington Post, That's you right. know, and he he has a book called Disintegration, and in his book he talks about how post. Um, of course, 1965, you know, similar to uh, issues that were raised by other people, that with the influx of all this immigration, that it's very difficult for, to now to even speak about uh, the African American community, the mm-hmm. Black American community. So he divides Black Americans. He actually uses those terms, Black American, like Dr. Jackson. Like he says, Black American. He, he he actually divided them into four categories. He said the, the one category, the first category, is what we call the mainstream. You know, this is sort of like the the um, the um, the middle class. Okay. That so the majority of Black Americans are middle class. That's right. Not poor. You know, mm-hmm. that's the first thing. Said, again, there's already a stereotype out there. Most Black people are just poor. Said, no, mm-hmm. most Black people are middle class. Now, some of those people may think they're poor. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, uh-huh. but, 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 but you got your house. You got two, three TVs. You got you know three telephones. You have a refrigerator. You have a, all of your food is you know you have your all of your shelves are filled up with food. Among that's other right. things, you have a car. You know, and you you're, you're poor. By comparison, with comparison to someone else who has more than you right. are, yeah. than, than you do. Welcome so, to uh, right. yeah, middle class <laughs> right. life in America. Yeah, right. yeah. so to feel that way. Right, exactly. So, so right. that's the first one. The first one he's got the he calls it the mainstream, the okay. middle class. The second is the 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 um, the abandoned class or mm-hmm. this this lower class, and so this are the the inner city people who mm-hmm. which are a minority among yeah. blacks who seem to be. Um, in a hopeless situation that uh, that that perhaps they would never come out of their poverty or their mm-hmm. um, their condition. Then the third class, the third um, class, he, he calls them the um, transcendent mm-hmm. blacks, okay. and so this is a minority as well. But these are like the ones even above the. These are the super rich, right? right? So the Oprahs and other people like that, you know. So sure. these transcendent class right. uh, of black people who definitely have power, who even many whites, if not the majority of them, are envious of because they have right. achieved so much. Right. Uh, and then you have the last one he calls the emerging class. So this class is a combination of the we call the mixed race. Um, black people, like individuals, have one white parent, or you know, or some other race as well. You know, it can be one black parent and, and, and another parent from a different race, uh, and then you have uh, these new Af- immigrants from Africa. Mm. Right? right. So he put put all of them in one single category okay. called the the emerging class. Right. Right. So so we can't even talk about again a a monolithic. That's black right. American. There is no one black experience. Right, exactly. Yeah, there is yeah, not. You know, so and I think that that's one of the things that has to be clear, especially to Muslim activists, right? Because mm-hmm. there's, yeah. I've seen Muslim activists seem to focus so much on what I consider to be sort of liberal elements among the Black American community, right? Liberal elements, you know, maybe morally liberal. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't mean like you know, sort of politically, but I mean right. morally liberal elements in the Black American community. Assuming, or socially liberal, right? Or socially, okay. you say, right? Socially, yeah. socially liberal people, you know, who 
who who they assume represent the real black people, that's right? Right, right, right. That's right. And anyone else has to be a sellout, right? You know, so, and uh, and 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 you'll be surprised, you know, just how 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 much um, how, how 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 large the number of sort of morally conservative or socially conservative blacks there are out there. You that's see, right. right, and they generally are painted as being Uncle Tom's or sellers. Right, 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 exactly. I mean, and notwithstanding his really very, very problematic uh, legal opinions, but you take someone like Clarence Thomas, right, who, who, right. who, who, who let's say, is certainly socially conservative. Right, yeah, yeah. But he's just representative of, of, of many people. I, 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 mean, I can't think of who, who's the, uh, is it not Sidney Steele? What's his name? Um, anyway, it'll, it'll come to me. Um, who's the one who wrote um, Carter, last name Carter? Uh, Stephen Stephen L. Carter, uh-huh. right? I mean, you you conserve you consider him conservative, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. right. Uh, among others, and and right. so they generally are painted with this, you know, right. sellouts, right? As, as being sellouts, or, or sellout, right? There so you go. He's not a real, a real black person. That's he's right. And so, yeah. but you that, saw, saw it on again on right. Fresh Prince, right? Carlton, oh, that's yeah. right. Was, that's right. No, I mean, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, right. Yeah, yeah. He, he don't. He wasn't performing blackness. In yeah. the same way, yes, and that was right. that was the the point of conflict. That's, that's, right. that's right. That's yeah. a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. He liked Tom Jones, remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah of, course. Of, course, point, yeah. of course. Of course. Of uh-huh. course. Uh, uh, but um, so uh, uh, what was I? I was I, I was going somewhere with that. Oh, but anyway, you no, know, no, no, no. It's, it's okay uh, because I think again that's I think a broader conversation even mm-hmm. beyond just mm-hmm. the Muslim community, mm-hmm. right? It's a conversation that mm-hmm. where, uh, yeah, that, this is what I wanted to go back to because you you and you've. You mentioned it, but like going back to the movie Get Out, for example, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Jordan Peele, mm-hmm. he himself comes from a mixed race background. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. uh, what's interesting, and then, but I think what what do you, would you? How do you feel that a lot of the praise that that movie has garnered, and in he himself, because he was what the first person, first Black American to be nominated in three categories ever in the history of the I, Academy. I, I believe so. Yeah. <laughs> So screen screenplay, best picture, and best director. Yeah, first, yeah. first to win an Oscar for screenwriting, I think. Right. Yeah. So is that is is that is do you think a lot of that is is just tokenism, like, hmm. or is it deserved? Or <laughs> I, yeah, well, I mean, I I don't think I'm in a, in, a, in a position to really say whether or not it's tokenism or not, but I definitely suspect. That a lot of it is tokenism, and I, and I'll I'll give you a different example to, yeah. to to show you what I mean by it. Like for instance, Moonlight, uh, the movie Moonlight. Thank right? you, right, thank you. So, right, so, right. So, Last so, year's right. last year's best picture. Yes, right. 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 So, and best supporting actor, mm-hmm. uh, who right. is a uh, Ahmadiyya. Uh, Ahmadiyya, Ahmadiyya, Ahmadiyya also, from right. here. So, yes, right. From, so, Oklahoma, from Hayward, sorry. I think yeah. Hayward. Hayward, Hayward, sorry, right. that's right. He took a shahada here. Right, right. right. So, so. I was curious. Please, I, I was yeah. very curious yeah. about this movie, and I was like, "Okay, what's the buzz all about?" You know, so and I really didn't want to watch it at first. I heard what it was about, you, yeah, right? Just, so, okay, so I watched it, yeah. and I'm looking at the movie, and, I, and I'm saying to myself, first and foremost, I don't feel that his acting was so spectacular that it deserved an Oscar. I agree. You know, and it wasn't bad, right. you know, but it wasn't as spectacular, so spectacular that you really, oh my god, it's you know such great acting. Right. Second of all, he played a drug dealer, right? Which okay, it's fine. He played all types of things in movies, mm-hmm. you know. But the but the but the, 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 the bigger deal to me of all of this was that he only was in about the first fifteen to twenty minutes of the movie. That's right. And I would say, well, why is he getting an Oscar for only playing in the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Um, which really made me feel that it was all propaganda. This was all propaganda for one, mm. propaganda to win over Muslims because there are Muslims. Oh my God, Alhamdulillah, Muslim finally wins an Oscar. You know, right. so we love that stuff. You That's know, right. they acknowledge us. You know, the yeah, people, you know, the, 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 the mainstream That's culture, right. they they accept us. You know, right. so you know, so so we're in. You know, yeah. well, you're not really still. So. Yeah, you know, right. but That's right. but yeah, it's, it's but, crumbs from the table. Right. And then yeah. the second of all, he's a black guy. You know, oh yeah, minority. He's a double minority. Mm-hmm. He's a black guy on top oh. of that. Mm-hmm. But the movie, the storyline is about two black gay men, you know, who yeah, they hook up, whatever, yeah. and, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they, that's what they do. And to me, I say it's propaganda, and uh, because because um, they know that realistically, the black American community is the final frontier when it comes to the uh, LGBT, acceptance yeah. of, of, of LGBTQ uh, yeah. normalization. Right. Right. There Lifestyle. are people still, and I'm not talking about just Muslims, you know, that you look at the, the preachers, look at, look, you see everybody, you know, and then people in general society, that is something that 
our people are just very it's still I mean as things have changed have softened up a little bit you know because you have people out there like Cornell West or you have um, um, like um, Kanye Kanye West or or sometimes Jay Z you have these people that these these rappers yeah, hip hoppers they're trying right. to use them as well to normalize you know this sort of LGBTQ and even uh, what's the guy from uh, like the the black guy from uh, Transformers and uh, he has the uh, Tyrese. Tyrese, you know, Tyrese, him too, is another one, right? It's Tyrese and Queen Latifah. You have them, yeah. they're utilizing them to try to bring it, make it normal in right. the black right. American community. Right. Right. You know, so, so I see, see that with sort of propaganda. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I can, I would definitely suspect that it's tokenism when mm-hmm. it comes to like, uh, like to, the. Yeah, we get like the kind of the, support or the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the word? Uh, the accolades that they yeah. get out has, 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 has garnered. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, no, mm-hmm. you, you, you talk about mm-hmm. sort of like the LGBT mm-hmm. sort of in like, um, mm-hmm. What's the road? The kind of inroads that they're mm-hmm. infiltration, infiltration within the Black American community. <laughs> yeah. um, I know you have. You're yeah. certainly opinionated yeah. about that yeah. uh, issue in mm-hmm. in, in general. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe kind of speak to that, and, and and were those topics kind of talked about at the mm-hmm. conference, for right. example? And if they were, kind of what was the well, I mean, reaction it, from the community. Well, when it comes to the conference, I, I, people would ask me what I th- thought about it, you know. So, and I first have to give myself a grade, and so and I tell them, I say, my, the grade I give myself for the conference is like a B plus, right? You know, because um, I feel that it was definitely successful, you know, and that it uh, really, you know, spoke to everyone's um, concerns, got them excited and motivated to to look forward towards the next one. But B plus is opposed to A A plus because. Um, I did not allot uh, enough time during mm-hmm. each panel for for everyone to to kind of get through enough topics mm-hmm. that I originally envisioned that they would be able to speak about. And so one of the things was that okay. um, so that one 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 area would have been on the panel related to conserv- conservatism and liberalism, uh, or and also the second one w- was on the one related to crime, sin, and sort of accepting social outcasts because yeah. it wasn't just about people been in prison, but it was about people. Yeah, for instance, who may be gay, whatever, formerly gay Muslims or, or Muslims who are struggling with gay desires, yeah. uh, um, you know, so how do you sort of uh, um, incorporate them into the community? Right. Right. So it's not about trying to be uh, uh, um, in, uh, uncompassionate. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, I, I, and I'll be the first to tell people, say, listen, I, I grew up with a cousin who's gay. Mm. Right. I grew up with a, cousin, a gay cousin. As a matter of fact, right now, so I have... I have a, a, a one male, a homosexual cousin. His mother's my, my auntie. You know, my mother's sister is right. is, 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 is lesbian. You know, right. So her and her son, right. right, gay, right. You know, and so my other cousin died some years ago. You know, who from years ago he's grown up in the black community when the, all this talk about gay rights and gay marriage it, it wasn't even spoken about. He was already gay right, right. in the black community when it was very dangerous to be that. That's right. Right. He used to walk around. He would have a kufi on, and that was kind of. Mm-hmm. Because some of the gay people used to wear the kufi as well oh, in, really? in the black community. Oh, okay. um, so, so that's, that's the first thing I would say about it uh, is that uh, that it's um, you know that my sort of background. So it's now I'm not speaking yeah. in the way where I say, okay, listen, let's just you know just be totally um, harsh and, yeah, and abrasive right. with people right. and not give consideration to whatever they're struggling with. That's right. You know, my issue is with largely what I see is Muslims advocating. For the legitimacy of the lifestyle, right. there's one thing to actually be working with someone, mm-hmm. right, who actually is LGBTQ, you know, and um, and and the cause and being united in a particular cause. Right. But if that cause is one which is anti-Islamic, mm-hmm. you know, which undermines Islamic morality, that's where I really have the issue with. Is right. that, you know, you're out now advoc- advocating for right. it, and that's one thing I I personally can't tolerate. Right. You know, and so if you ever see me speak about speak out against anything, it's because of that. That's right. It's not that's because right. I hate gay people. No, mm-hmm. you know, people, people, some people, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of things I can say about about it. You know, right? That's right. Not what shows no, about. I think it's a really. But it didn't come up. It didn't okay. come up. It didn't come up. The, but yeah. I think no, the, 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 we have you on the show, and I think mm-hmm. it's an important conversation because, yeah. um, it, and it's, it's it's very interesting because you talk yeah. about even within the Black American mm-hmm. community how. And, and by that I mean black American I don't mean black American Muslim just mm-hmm. black community mm-hmm. in general in America is this conversation around you know what is sort of the defining you know 
who speaks on behalf of that community? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you are a black conservative, mm-hmm. where do you fit in mm-hmm. to, to right. the, the, the mainstream right. voice? Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel that you're right. I mean, there's certainly been much more of a showcasing, highlighting of, mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and lampshading of uh, black liberal voices yeah, right. as opposed mm-hmm. to black conservative right, voices. Right. And I would argue that mm-hmm. in some ways that's sort of the... Uh, what is it? The uh, like the 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 canary in the in the coal mine, in mm-hmm. a sense, for the Muslim community, because mm-hmm. I think that what, what we're seeing or what we're beginning to see mm-hmm. with the kind of rise of Muslim activists, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right, right, mm-hmm. and we don't need to initially necessarily mm-hmm. mention names, even right. people we've had on the show who mm-hmm. identify themselves right. as you know Muslim mm-hmm. activists mm-hmm. into that into that uh, cadre of people mm-hmm. is if you are liberal, yes, right, and there is right. no place, or is there a place mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, for uh, Muslim conservatives in that, or, or people who identify right. as conservatives within that mm-hmm. that cadre of so-called activists. Yeah, well, I th- I think is for me, I don't identify as a conservative, right. but I also don't identify as as a Democrat, right? Yes, I mean right. we're talking about political, political right. identification, right? You know, and I, and I think that we we are more centrist, I guess I would say politically, right, 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 right. politically, but, but you would characterize no, yourself as socially, socially, socially conservative. conservative, right? Definitely right. socially conservative. And I'm talking about yeah, when right. I say when right. I use the word liberal conservative. I'm talking about social issues right. that where the, the, the if we could play you're also saying in specific reference to mm-hmm. being Muslim yes right, right. so, so I'm saying there's a difference between being politically conservative and being re- religiously conservative mm-hmm. yes right Right. There Especially are. Especially in, in, in the frame of... Well, I'm of, using of religiously Muslim. conservative, socially conservative, morally conservative, mm-hmm. all as synonymous yeah. here. And interchangeable. But I'm Am I saying, wrong? I'm saying, are they interchangeable, right? I mean, I don't. Why, why would you say what, otherwise? What, what makes one a conservative Muslim, for example? One can my point. One can be for example, a conservative Muslim okay. while still being. I think you could a identify political liberal, for example. Right. So right. I think you so, can identify those things I'm that are once considered. Once we enter a new field, right. The the categorization changes. Like, what are the issues in the mm-hmm. sort of cultural yeah. wars in America, right? Whether it's abortion, uh, gay rights, uh, you know. Uh, or, or conversations around L- L- LGBT, you know, Q in general, mm-hmm. and abortion. Let's just take those two as an example, right? Generally speaking, Muslims tend to be socially conservative on those issues. Yes. Yeah. My point is, although they may vote Democrat, mm-hmm. my point is that one could argue, and certainly this is this is we see an evidence of this. What makes one a conservative Muslim is that they pray five times a day, and mm-hmm. they don't eat pork, mm-hmm. and they don't drink alcohol. Mm-hmm. Okay, I take that as sort of like. Like sort of baseline. I I would agree with that, but mm-hmm. that's not yeah. The yeah, perception, the public perception. That's true. Right, that's right, true. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. Touché. I mean, yeah. I think. I think. No, no, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I think I, I agree with that. He conceded yeah. a point, yeah. folks. Yeah. <laughs> Mark the calendar. That would be not true. Anyway. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you were my wife saying that, okay, fine, I, I, I'd, I'd give you credit. But me and you, come on. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, please. Yeah, why would we stop? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> you were saying you, you you agreed with Zucky in the, in that in that kind of right. Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. D- depending on the field of spe- spe- specialization, right? Yeah. In and, and I think one one of the fundamental problems or flaws in in certain activist thinking is that there's this belief that in order for you to actually effectively do activism you have to fall under someone else's umbrella Mm. you know and so there's talk at times about okay well we are in alliance with this community or that community says no no you're not in alliance you are under their umbrella right you know the very fact that you're not allowed to speak towards your own convictions Right? right, but you can speak and you can advocate for theirs. It's proof proof enough that you're you're under their umbrella, right? That's and right. they're dictating to you the terms of engagement. So, so that that's 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 um, I think an important thing to, to to consider. And so we have as Muslims have to get out of the 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 sort of the way that everyone else frames, frames their us. particular interests and among other things, you know, our own interest, our own interests should be dictated by our, our morality, but, you know, right, so we, our own morality should be, should be the basis for that, it's just like everyone else's interests are dictated by their morality, our own interests should be dictated and by our morality. And we should be morality. unapologetic about it. Right, exactly, right, you know, and it doesn't mean I hate you, I want you dead, or anything, and I say, listen, you know, we can't work together, I can't work with you on that one, yeah. this, fine, that, yeah. no, I can't work with you on that, right. you know, I mean, if, if, if all of the, 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 the wine sellers, you know, started to have trouble. You know, we, if we say it, it probably wouldn't happen, almost impossible to happen. It seems, <laughs> but let's just say hypothetically, it's, it's, it's hypothetically right. the wine sellers yeah. all of a sudden there are these restrictions being, uh, you know, suggested for imposed them, right? You know, them. imposed upon them now. And they, are we going to go in and we're going to advocate for you know the wine sellers, right? Yeah. You know, we're going to come out and say, hey, you know, now, again, it's one thing to say like, having the freedom to do something, right, under a secular state. 
you know, and, and it's a difference between that and then you saying that, listen, you know, you, sh- you shouldn't have such an attitude, you know, you shouldn't dislike, you know, what you see, mm-hmm. you know, and this is what I see that I feel that a lot of times some of our sort of quote unquote activists are doing is that they're actually kind of calling Muslims to actually to give up a sense of distaste, a natural distaste that we're supposed to have for certain types of vice, right? right? And then embrace, have a full embrace of, of other people's lifestyle, right. you know, and um, and uh, you know, I can tell you some some other things that I won't tell you because there's some private conversations I have with some people who are really troubling in yeah. that particular regard. That's right. But um, um, but but when it comes to the black community, we're coming back to that. Yeah. Um, as we talked about, it's not a monolith. Um, uh, another thing I think the Muslim community needs to understand about the black experience in America is that right from the very beginning, in a sense, the end of slavery. <laughs> That or even actually before the end of slavery, there were basically two sort of paradigms that developed in the in the African American community. One was that that uh, okay of the separatist paradigm. Listen, let's go back to Africa. Let's get, these people don't want us here. Oh, yeah. Let's find our way back to there or or Latin America. Let's go somewhere else, right? Yeah. You know, so we can live and flourish. The other opi- opinion was of the integrationist um, right. um, opinion, which actually was spearheaded, or perhaps you would say, was um, largely led by like Frederick Douglass. You know, that was his position. Now, his friend, his colleague Martin Delaney, was of the, the opposite uh, right. view. And, and Martin Delaney was um, he was the, a Harvard educated um, physician who actually was had a very very high position in Lincoln's army. Mm-hmm. You know, but he was right there with uh, Frederick Douglass. We don't hear about him, That's but right. his position was that listen, you know, let's get out of here to go somewhere else. Yeah. All right, so we've had these two paradigms in the in the Black American community Always. for for a very long time, That's right. right? And you see, for instance, if you compare Martin to early early, Mal- early, early Malcolm, and then of course the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Right. You see that Martin was about integration, Malcolm's about separate, you know, but separating, That's right? right? Yeah, you know, but it even goes back before then. Booker T. Washington was about nationalist separatists uh, being separatists, and there are others, you know, who are like let, right. let, let's be concerned with civil rights, yeah. right? Martin yeah. Garvey was. Yeah. You know, he was from Jamaica originally. You know, but he, yeah, he was definitely one but of those also an advocate of yeah. advocate of, of of going back to Africa. Correct, right? right. So right. you still have those sentiments here, and that one of the I guess you would say one of the fundamental um, distinction, distinct, dis- distinct, distinguishing uh, characteristics of of the integrationist and the separatist uh, paradigms uh-huh. is that. The separatist nationalist paradigm emphasizes like self help, self empowerment. Mm, right now, right. you know, it's totally against victimology. Okay. Right? And in one sense, you can kind of put like the sec- the conservative blacks in that category. I was going to say because well. what's interesting right. is that yeah. whole idea of yeah. you know right. <clears throat> picking oneself up by their right. bootstraps. Right. That's become now kind of a conservative trope. Right. Right, right. Exactly. Where's the integration is right? Exactly. Yeah, in the integration is yeah. paradigm. You find you'll find the opposite. It's yeah. all about listen. We are victims. You know, right. racism, racism, right. racism, right. racism. Right. right. You know, yeah. Right. Even though Martin Luther King didn't only talk about racism, he talked about the, the church three the three evils of society. Racism was just one of them. He That's talked true. about you know hyper materialism. He also talked about the uh, military industrial yeah. complex. Right. That's you know, right. but we rarely focus on the other two. Mm-hmm. You know, but black black people racism is not the only thing that black people need to be concerned with. Yeah. Right, you follow me, yeah. you know. And so I think that we sort of miss the mark when we only focus on that. And the same thing, Muslims have to be very careful not to make the same mistake. Right. You know, I mean, well, of course, black Muslims too, but I mean, like you know, non-black Muslims. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I guess I kind of by way of uh, wrapping up this conversation, uh, you know, we 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 touched on it earlier. You are now faculty at Zaytuna College. Yeah. Uh, I think it's important to kind of mention that. Um, uh, are, do you see uh, among the sort of course offerings that you're offering mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. as the college begins to expand mm-hmm. beyond just sort of your Sharia training mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, are you wanting to have convers- like have classes that focus on or are you presently yeah, having classes that focus on these issues yeah definitely I mean I'll, I've already written an article in the uh, Renovatio the uh, oh great the um, the um, journal the new journal the for Zaytuna College uh, right. called Beyond Racism you know so I've already sort of introduced at least a well, I tried to start a conversation about that. Um, I'm not totally sure, certain that Jayton will ever like make it a major focus because it's a liberal arts yeah. uh, college focus on you know that in addition to Islamic law and theology. Yeah. But naturally, in um, our conversations uh, in classes like family law, classes like um, inheritance law, you know, right. certain things will come up, and so right. and there are some very difficult issues that you have to have conversation about. Yeah. I'm about. Dealing with the difficult issues, I'm only about that. Always about, and it's not, and it's not because I just 
like controversy. Yeah. You know, it's not because of that. It's because I believe that the only way that you get Muslims to have conviction about their deen is to actually help them to work through the things that they struggle with. That's right. You have That's to have right. a conversation about it. You That's know? right. You know, so like, you know, if, if they've never heard about, like, for instance, the age of Aisha, or they never heard about the Hidden Verse, or they never heard about slavery in Islam, you understand? Absolutely. All those things come up or... You, you, right. There, there are a number of issues right, that we right. can talk about. You know, you know, you have to have a conversation with them how to help them to work absolutely. through. Absolutely, and, and I think there's a like fascinating yeah. trend that we're beginning yeah. to see yeah. within the community. Mm-hmm. You know, the idea of like safe space yeah. and, and third spaces mm-hmm. and so on yeah, that emerged. Right. Like, hey, let's not mm-hmm. ruffle any feathers. Right, right. Let's mm-hmm. like, and I feel like because we've made this shift towards mm-hmm. almost in reaction to mm-hmm. like mosques being exclusive and things mm-hmm. I mean real concerns right, right. Mm-hmm. but I feel like again with the conversation mm-hmm. I was seeing earlier mm-hmm. we're going we're almost running in the opposite direction yes, which right, is now yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. everything has to be handled ha- yeah, handled yeah. with kid gloves yeah, right. we can't have those mm-hmm. thorny yeah. conversations anymore because yeah, right. you might offend mm-hmm. somebody yeah, right. or you might scare someone off mm-hmm. or you might uh, you know chase you know like the, 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 the space won't be safe you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. snowflake whatever you right, want to call right, it yeah, right? totally, yeah. characterization <laughs> however you want to characterize it and and I'm all I mean I'm all for inclusive spaces don't get me wrong I mean I've shared my own personal affiliation with Tatlib so I mean that's kind of like my you know I, I have that on my resume as it were but at the same time I feel like the danger I'm seeing is that oftentimes we don't want to talk about these right. issues, exactly, because exactly. they are they are uncomfortable. Right. So right. That, that's great that the college yeah. sees itself as yeah. a as a right. way of right. of preparing students for. Yes, that. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. I mean, because this is a very you know right now it's a very um, troubling time, yeah. and a very confusing time, for, right? Especially for young people, right? Especially for young people. I mean, we grew up, we didn't have like all these devices and, yeah. and, and the Facebook and Twitter and yeah. Snapchat and Absolutely. you know you know there's all the internet crap. Right. Yes, they're right. out there, right. you know, social media, right? You know, and on the, the pitfalls. There. there, there's a lot of it. We didn't have that when we were growing up, Absolutely and I not. think it's easier for us to say, you know what, pull away from this, right? right? But from from when they first come out of the the womb, it's like it's all, all right. automatically they're That's already, right. you know, using these devices, and eventually they're gonna they're gonna um, discover the internet, uh, and um, how do you um, how do you keep them from be developing uh, developing like uh, addiction mm-hmm. to Things that become very destructive yeah. to their behavior, yeah. uh, um, and they bl- sort of blur their sense of reality. Right. Uh, um, and uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's a major issues. challenge for parents right. you know, at this time. And, and then, and you know, we have to have some compassion on, on the kids too, because it's not completely their fault that you know a lot of those things happen. So um, for them, it's like yeah. second nature. I mean, it just right. like you said, they right out of the womb. They're I mean, right. That's what they're right. Right. To. My son. He's, right. I, I mean, again, I'm, I'm not. Sp- T- talking that way is just to say, like, you know, no, I'm, right. I'm guiltless, <laughs> right. Right. you know, but it's like, you know, my, you know he, he likes plays his games. Sometimes he likes to watch, you know, but I have right. the kids YouTube for right. him, you know. I mean, but even some of that is like, my 15 year old, right? Yeah. I mean, and, and again, you have a teenager, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they came of age mm-hmm. where this technology and, mm-hmm. and social media mm-hmm. was just there it yes. was not even an option mm-hmm. like we right. still belong to that generation mm-hmm. probably the last of our generation mm-hmm. uh, of of generation at least for the foreseeable future mm-hmm. where we had where it came later and yeah. we had the yeah. choice mm-hmm. to adopt or not adopt adept mm-hmm. or not you know whereas uh, subsequent generations now they're just born i mean that's, and, yeah. and it happened more slowly i mean the right it was yes, today right. is not the internet from 20 years ago right, right. i mean right i mean hey just we, just the the patience of sitting through your modem through your modem in, dialing up i was going to say that's right yeah I right, mean, right i was talking about this with my students right the idea of the internet just being mm-hmm. it's all around you it's mm-hmm. like the force like it's just you can act on, you know what i mean yes yeah, yeah, because right. because 20 years ago yeah. you yeah. would go home and you would sit down and you would yeah. act and then you would log off the that's internet right. you were that's cut right. off that's not an option yeah. anymore. That's right. Yeah. When I was studying in Morocco, I, I one time a week I would go to the internet, internet cafe. cafe. I was right, going right, to say, right, talk right, about, right. that's gone yeah. by the, the, yeah. that's gone by way of the dodo yeah. and, and and blockbuster yeah. video. Dude, I mean, every, <laughs> every <laughs> time is internet yeah. time. It's not exactly mm-hmm. yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway, well, thank you so much for, I think we've, you know... This is amazing. We, we covered uh, a, lot a lot of ground, but it was all yeah. uh, incredibly engrossing. So, thank you so much. Now, I do know you are on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you mind people <laughs> engaging you there? Where can people find now you? That, now that we've decried <laughs> the evils of social media. Uh, um... I, I I'm on Twitter yeah. um, under under Dr. Abdullah Ali uh, bin Hamid uh, at uh, bin Hamid Ali mm-hmm. dot Ali at gmail dot com. You know, my, as your email address. My email address connects okay. to that. Of course, um, I have my Facebook page as well. I yeah. actually have a few different 
Facebook pages, you know, under Ben Hamid Ali, or this, you, it's probably diff- more difficult for people to get onto that well, one. Tell them about the public one. You know, yeah, the yeah, public yeah. one is, yeah. is, is uh, Abdullah Ben Hamid Ali, there you the, go. Whole, the whole name, uh-huh. or just Sheikh Abdullah Ben Hamid Ali. Yeah. Um, don't expect uh, quick answers. You know, if anybody has ever um, write writes to me, yeah. you know, you know, I actually, even though it, it actually looks like I'm one than more than I'm, I'm actually on it. Uh, so I've, I've, I've been trying to develop a, a type of discipline where I'm, I don't spend as much time on it. So, so you might see a lot of posts from me, right. but that doesn't mean that I'm actually there, like watching out for comments and things like that. Right. You know? So, Correct. so I'm just I'm, I'm posting, you know, from my phone when I read an article and things like that, or I see a video on a regular basis. No, but generally, um, um, I try my best to limit my internet use. Mm-hmm. That's right. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, any. Uh, like writings or things that people can access that are out there in the public. I mean, you mentioned. Oh yeah, you can go to my website, lamppostproductions.com. Thank you. Yeah, lamppostproductions.com. So there is a blog right now, and, and it hopefully we'll be able to update it to a regular website. It's easier to actually right. search, uh, but you can go under this one particular link. This is American Voices, and if you go under my name, I have a, a number of articles I've written uh, listed there. Now, some of the media content on that site is like a subscription model. Um, well, people can yeah, subscribe. Right, exactly right. So you people can, can subscribe. subscribe and, right, there's some great content right. on there. I mean, Dr. Mm-hmm. Jackson. Some, mm-hmm. A lot of the people we've talked about, right, right. Dr. Mm-hmm. Blankenship, yes, Dr. Right. Jackson. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Now this mm-hmm. now this conference will mm-hmm. that be available? Uh, the conference, inshallah, yes, it will okay. be available hopefully by the, by tomorrow. Inshallah. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just okay. talked to, to Brother Khalil uh, just, okay. uh, when, on the way over here. Got so. It. And that will be available through Lamp Post Productions. Yeah, through Lamp Post as well. Okay, again, okay, wonderful. So people can find that out as well. Um, so thank you so much, Dr. Sure. Ali. It's been, been a real pleasure. Sure. Same here. Yeah. And with that, as we wrap things up, Pervez, why don't you tell people about our Patreon page? That's right. So uh, we've been getting some uh, great support, uh, at least you know initially when we launched the page uh, a few weeks ago. So thank you for those people who have gone on to the Patreon page. Uh, and, and, and become a patron. So you can go to uh, patreon.com slash diffuse congruence and you can become a monthly patron of the show. And, uh, you know, and you can read about all the wonderful things that we'd like to do with the money that that, that, that we are able to um, uh, glean from that from that endeavor. But uh, please do go to our Patreon page and support the podcast. Um, every little bit helps. And so, um, you know, and for those who've already gone on there, thank you so much. Um, you can reach out to us on, as always, on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash diffuse congruence. Um, and uh, you can email us with any questions, comments, feedback at diffuse congruence at gmail.com. You can find Zucky on his Twitter and his social media presence is... So my, my Twitter is at Zucky's Corner, Z-A-K-I-S Corner. If you want to go to my website, just add a .com. And uh, again, just to reiterate, if you are liking uh, what we're doing, what we have been doing for, for coming up on six years now, uh, just coming up on five years now... Uh, Time flies. It, it does, yeah. But not that fast. Uh, again, if you're liking what we're doing... Uh, what we have been doing for coming up on five years now please kick a few coins into our collection plate uh it's not going into our pocket the goal is to make this show the best it can be upgrade our equipment and also uh hopefully uh allow us to to reach the guests that we think would make the the most impact uh to you our listeners so thank you again for all of your support over the years and we would appreciate whatever more support you can give us. That's right. So uh, on behalf of my co-host, Pervez Ahmed, my name is Zaki Hassan. This has been Diffuse Congruence, and uh, catch you next time. Thanks for listening.